Well, hello everyone. This is Al Fadi, and I want to welcome you to a special live session with Sam Shamoun. This is our Q and A video series, and uh, today might even be more special uh, simply because we have an arrogant person who have been begging to at least come on the show to try to debate with me and with Sam Shamoun about the oneness of Allah. Tawheed, basically. So we invited him to show up, and let's see if he's man enough to show up, and uh, you know we'll take yeah. it from there. Yeah. Until yeah, then, said, yeah, yeah, good brother. Until then, uh, let's yeah. open by talking about Tawheed and the dilemma of that. You wrote a lot about that. You and I did yes. a number of shows about that. So we're gonna revisit it one more time. Yeah, I know. He said he's gonna mop the floor with us. So please, uh, you know, I need a good cleansing so hopefully Isa my Skype is open there he goes combating combating belief true belief okay here you go here's my Skype call me and mop the floor with me have your Quran ready yeah so and don't think you're gonna talk over us and scream so Skype is open buddy come on all right come back there is the Skype Benny yeah. underscore Malik three it's right there I just did it, brother yeah. okay so combating belief with uh, idolatry call us so we can talk about your tawhid in the quran by the grace of jesus christ so <clears throat> we ask the father of our lord jesus by the power of the holy spirit to fill us for the glory of jesus christ anoint us to give us perfect self-control power and passion to speak truth without error and speak it for the glory of jesus christ so that jesus will be magnified and lies and falsehoods will be exposed and jesus increase in us so take over the session father and take over our lives and fill us with the spirit not to shame the lord jesus but glorify jesus and destroy the lies of these fake religions like islam for the glory of your son in jesus name Yahweh, the father and spirit all right come on here he goes asa all right my man now let's see if you start insulting we're gonna have to send you on your merry way let's see pick up combating belief hello you there Hello. 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 Yeah, now you can hear us. Can you hear me? Yeah, unfortunately, yes. Yeah. So I want you to mop the floor with me. Come on. Yeah, I'm here. Okay, so you believe in Tawheed, I don't, I, right? I don't see my. Uh... You don't need to see yourself because this is Skype. It's not being broadcast on this channel, but they know it's combating disbelief. And uh, Aisa, so you're going to mop the floor with us because you believe in Tawheed, right? You there? We can't hear you now. Hello? Yeah, I'm here. Okay, so because we can't hear you, you got to speak louder. Okay, so. All right, I'm, I'm, I'm here. I'm okay, here. I'm assuming you're Sunni, right? I'm hearing the echo. Hold on. I yeah. Okay. Okay. Block. Silence your okay. computer. You can hear me through Skype. Yeah. So okay. So silence. Okay. So you're. I'm assuming you're Sunni, right? Not Shia. That's correct. Okay. So you believe the Quran is Kalam Allah? Of course. Can you show me where the Quran in the Quran says it's Kalam Allah? Yeah. Sure. I can show you that. Okay. Show um, it to me. Show it to me. That's what I'm asking you. Don't change the subject. Go to your Quran. And show me where the Quran says the Quran is Kalam Allah. Okay, I can't think of the exact verse right now, but okay. if right. you give me a second, hold on one second. Sure, sure. Go ahead. Sure. Seems like a nice guy. He's being respectful, so we can respect. So that's good. Absolutely. So if I find this where it says it's Kalam Allah, then, then what are you going to do? And then if you can't, are you going to say Muhammad is a fake? If you can't find it, I want you to say in front of everyone, I'm going to say Muhammad is a fake. Do you agree? Yeah, I thought so. So just find me the verse and don't put conditions. Okay, here it is. Uh, do you want it in Arabic or English? No, because what you're going to call it, chapter 9, verse 12, does not say it's the Quran. So read it for me. Or chapter 9, verse 6. Go ahead, read it for me. So that people see that you didn't meet my challenge. Read it out loud. Do you want it in Arabic or English? Because we're dealing with people who don't understand Arabic. Read the verse out loud because you're going to now prove you didn't meet my challenge. Read it. Okay. 
Are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Read so, it. I'm, I'm pulling up the English one second here. Yes, go ahead. Okay, so in Surat al Baqarah. Yeah, read out loud. Uh, read out loud. Surat al Baqarah. Okay. So do you want that? Read the verse. Stop negotiating with me. Read the verse. We've been waiting. Yes. Please. Yes, I'm reading. I'm, I'm reading it. Okay, read it. So do you want that they will believe? And there was a party from them that used to hear the words of Allah. Yep. And then they turned, then they changed them from what from what they understood and they know and they knew. Now show me where it says those words of Allah are the Quran, because you just proved the Quran has been corrupted. Show me where it no, says actually, these words are the Quran. No, that, that's referring to, that's referring to the Torah. Okay, but why are you not quoting a verse that now you just admit is not about the Quran when I asked you to show me where the Quran claims to be the word of Allah. I'm still waiting for that verse. Show me in your Quran where it says the Quran is the word of Allah. I'm still waiting. There's no doubt that the Quran is the word of Allah. Don't tell me what you think. Prove it from your Quran. Show me the Quran where it says the Quran is the word of Allah. I'm still waiting. Okay. Surah Al-Baqarah, the second verse. That is the book. That is the book from Allah. Yeah, no, it doesn't say the Quran there. Yeah, can, and I, can I ask you? You're not see. Maybe it's not clear. English, maybe not your mother tongue. I didn't tell you to show me where the Quran is called the book Kitab. I asked you clearly. I asked you, is the Quran Kalam Allah, speech of Allah? You said yes. So I'm asking you, show me where the Quran says it is Kalam Allah, not Kitab book. And there, the word is Dalika Kitab, not Hada. It's not talking about the Quran. Exactly, Dalika, something about uh, that a book that exists. Hada mm -hmm. is talking about this book, but I thought the Quran was being revealed in piecemeal. So uh, by the time yeah, Surah Al-Baqarah yeah. was revealed, this wasn't complete yet. Yeah, well, no. Let him mop, mop the floor with us, and I don't want him to say two against one. So let me just go ahead. mop the floor with me. I'm so gonna I'm take my tea, my tea break right now. Okay, good. Can you show me again? My challenge is clear. Show me in the Quran where the Quran says the Quran is Kalam Allah. Can you find that verse or no? Yeah, where it says, until they hear the words of Allah. Not in this. Oh, here we go again. That's Surah Al-Tawbah, chapter, chapter, chapter 9, verse 6. Right? Surah yes. Al-Tawbah, chapter 9, verse 6. Is that what you're quoting? Yes. Prove to me that the words of Allah there is the Quran. Okay. See, you don't understand something here. Yeah, I know, I know. I'm, okay. I'm stupid. I'm, I'm an ummi. Okay. So okay, let, let's let me, not let, get let into the personal it, attack. Let, let, me explain very, let, let me try to explain a very important principle. I okay. don't care for your principles. I want you to prove it from the Quran and the Sunnah, right? So can you prove it from the Quran? We're not here for our opinions. You're going to mop the floor with me. Mop the floor using your Quran. So do you admit you don't have a verse where it says the Quran is Kalam Allah? So we can move to the next point of Tawheed. Uh, no, I don't have a verse that says in okay. those exact words right. that the Quran Now you're being is honest, the, and I respect that. That's the words. Okay, that's good. I respect that. I respect it. But now, according to your Sunni tradition, because the Quran is Kalam Allah, that's what you believe, it's one of the sifat, the attributes of Allah. So it's uncreated, right? It's uncreated. That's correct. It's okay. the words of Allah. So is the Quran Allah? Of course not. Say it again. The Quran is what? Of course not. Of okay. course not. The Quran is the words of okay, Allah. Okay, so good, good, good. Allah. We're great. So, but wait, I want people, because I want them to see what you said. The Quran is uncreated, but it's not Allah. Do the math for me, because I know you know math. You just said, yeah. we, well, hold on, let me repeat what you said so you don't change your opinion, because we're recording this. You just said the Quran is uncreated, and it's not Allah. So now, Allah's uncreated, and the Quran is uncreated, and the Quran is not Allah. That's too uncreated. Allah is not created, of course. The Quran is not created. How many of is course. that? Yes, that's two. So, but I thought you said Tawheed. You just admit two. That has nothing to do with Tawheed. I said Allah is not created and the Quran is not created. And you said two, but Tawheed is one, right? Tawheed means there's only one God worthy of worship. And what makes God God if not that he's uncreated? 
What makes God God? If what he's not uncreated, God, can God you have something other is... than God that's uncreated? No, everything, everything. Say it, wait, slowly, everything, slowly. Everything is created. Yes. Okay, yes, slowly, slowly, because you said it. You agreed with me. I want him here because you're speaking too fast. You said, no, everything else is uncreated. Only God is uncreated. But you just said the Quran is uncreated. That means the Quran is your ilah. It's God. The Quran is the speech of Allah, so it's not created. So now, anything, is the speech of Allah... That, anything that is an attribute of Allah is not created. Okay, but is it's the speech of Allah separate from Allah or inseparable from Him? It's His attribute that He can speak. Is it separate he, from he Him speak. or inseparable? Are you saying, is it an inseparable? Is it separate from Him or it cannot be separated from Him? Now you're getting into a very detailed point that only someone who has a lot of knowledge about Yeah, but you said you're going to mop the floor with me. That. When you said yes, you're going to mop the floor with yes. me, that means you're knowledgeable. So now mop the floor with me. I'm going to give you the mop and the bucket start mopping me. So is it okay. separate from Allah or is not separate from Allah? It's his attribute, like his seeing, Let it answer my question. Hearing, is the attribute speech, separate it's his from attribute. Him? You're not his answering knowledge, it. knowledge, for example. You're not answering the question. You think you are. I'm going to try it again. Is that attribute separate from God or you can't separate it from him? That is a very detailed question. It needs a lot of No, give knowledge, me give me a time. detailed answer. I'm I'm I got all night. Give me a detailed answer. Go ahead. I can give you a detailed answer. You can't? I can't. Okay. I'm not going to I'm not going to get into that. All right, good. Area. Right, that's fine. Okay, All right. I, I want to stick to the basics. Okay, that's well. The basics is that the Quran is the speech of Allah. It's uncreated, and this is basics. This is your basic Islamic theology as a Sunni. Okay, but put that aside. Let's now talk about the ruh. Do you believe the spirit is Gabriel? Do you believe the spirit is Gabriel? Uh, Jibril is an angel. Oh, yeah, but who's the ruh? The spirit then. Ruh Jibril Qudus. is the an angel referred to as the Ruh. Okay, so you spirit. believe that Gabriel is a spirit then, right? Yes. Can you show me in the Quran where it says, Gabriel is the spirit and the spirit is Gabriel? Show that to me. I can't. Say it again? I can't show you that. Okay. All right. Now, since you can't show me that, can you open up your Quran now? Go to Surah An-Nahl 16 verse 2. Read that for me. 16 verse two. 2 verse 2 yes okay read it He descends the angels and the Ruh, the spirit, from his command. Okay, now can I ask you a question? Yeah. Gabriel is an angel, right? Yes. Here you have the angel separate from the spirit. So if Gabriel is an angel, that means he's part of the angels that come down, but the spirit is separate from them. So how can Gabriel be the spirit? So because it says the spirit after the angels does not mean that the spirit cannot be an angel. Prove that an angel can be a spirit. Where does the Quran say angels are spirits? The Quran doesn't say that the angels are spirits. Okay, good. It so, says right here, it's, it says, the angels descend by the spirit, right? Yeah. Good. So that means the spirit are not the angels, but they descend by the spirit. Okay. You're not going to interpret the Quran for us. Well, we have scholars who interpret it for us. No, what, what's your point? That's, that's well, what I want to get. What's your point? You, can, you can't tell me you're scholars because your scholars are not prophets. They're not messengers. They don't receive wahi. I don't care what some scholars says some years later who do not receive revelation. The Quran is supposed to be revelation and you're the Son of your prophets was re revelation, not your scholars. So you can stick with your scholars. I want you to prove it from your Quran and your Sunnah. So 
you can appeal to any scholar you want, but even the same scholars for the same aisle will give you more than one interpretation. So let's not go there. Let's keep it simple. Okay, so that's one verse where the spirit and the angels are not the same. Now go to chapter 97 of the Quran, verse 4. Can you read it for me? Uh, well, if you can make it easier. Well, go ahead, uh, Al. Do you want to open up the Quran and read it for him? Because I want you to see it with your own eyes, 97, verse 4. But anyway, I'll have him read it for you then. Al, can you open up the Quran and read 97, four, verse 4? Four? 97, verse 4, yes. Yes. So Surah Al-Qadr, 97 verse 4, in Arabic first, In English, in it descend the angels and the spirit by the leave of their Lord with every command. So he just read the Arabic and English, so you don't say it's mistranslated. Here again, the angels are not the spirit, the spirit are not angels, they're two separate groups. Okay, let me tell you what the explanation of that is. On what basis are you going to tell me? Uh, do you receive Wahi? No, I have a book, though. It's called uh, Tafsir Ibn Kathir. Have you heard of okay, it? Okay, but Ibn Kathir, who comes 700 years after your prophet, who's a student of Ibn Taymiyyah. Was Ibn Kathir, did he have Ilham and Wahi? Was he inspired? Was John and Matthew and Luke inspired? According to your Quran, yes. Don't change the subject. Don't do the tap dance because you're the, I'm the subject. you're the I'm only saying, Muslim that would tell me Ibn Kathir is inspired. So wait, wait, I want to hear you. Are you say to everyone. So I, can't ask, I can't ask any questions. Is that how this is going to work? No, hold on. You're changing the subject. You ran. I will let the Quran answer to you that John is inspired because according to Surat Al-Maida and Sirat Rasulullah, John wrote down the gospel that God gave to Jesus. In fact, you're going to agree with me. Your Quran says in chapter 7, verse 157, that your prophet is prophesied in the gospel that is with them. Where is that prophecy of your prophet in the gospel? What gospel prophesied your prophet? What gospel prophesied my prophet? Chapter prophet 7. You mean? Chapter 7. I'm now going to change the subject with you because it got too hot for you to handle because you're going to mop the floor with me. Chapter 7, verse 157. 7, 157, it says, they will find in the Torah and the gospel with them a prophecy of the unlettered prophet, the prophet who is Ummi, in the Torah and the gospel that's with them, meaning at the time of Muhammad, the Christians had the gospel that had a prophecy of the unlettered, illiterate prophet. What gospel prophesied your prophet? Because you believe that's Muhammad, right? Yes. So what gospel did the Christians have at the time of Muhammad that had a prophecy of your prophet? It's referring to the gospel that was given to Jesus. But it says it was there at the time of your prophet with the Jews and Christians. That's what 7.157 says. Yes. Read it. So what gospel did they have at the time of Muhammad that had this prophecy of Muhammad? I'm not sure. So then why are you changing the subject if you can't answer the questions? I was talking about Tawheed. You went to John. So I'm going to answer you if you're not sure. So you want to stay on Tawheed now? You went to John. So I can't even show you what gospel that is because you're not sure. Well, God, you tell me what gospel what was it. According to Sirat Rasulullah by Ibn Ishaq, it's the gospel of John. Page 653 in the English translation by Alfred Guillaume. Alfred Guillaume translated Sirat Rasulullah by Ibn Ishaq in English. And in page, I'm sorry, not page 653, pages 103 to 104, pages 103 to 104, there Ibn Ishaq says that John wrote down the gospel that God gave to Jesus for the followers of the gospel, in which there's a description of your prophet. And there he quotes John chapter 15, verses 23 to 16, verse 1. And Ibn Ishaq says, that's the gospel that's the that gospel God gave that to God Jesus. Gave to We can hear okay, if, if we were to assume that that's the case, that it was the Gospel of John, how can you be so sure that it's the same Gospel of John that you have in, in your position today? Because, because we have, okay, okay. Al, you're going to have to oh, mute yourself have, because I think it's from your end. What's that? I hear an echo. I hear an echo. 
Either it's you Either or it's Al, you one of you guys have an echo. Have an echo. So you got to mute your computer. I am muted. Okay, so then you got to, Isa, go to your, yeah. if you're on YouTube, mute the sound there. Now it's okay. We don't hear it. I know that because it's Ibn Ishaq quotes John 15, 23, 16 to 1, and it's identical to what I have today. And secondly, there are copies of John before the time of your prophet that are identical to what I have now. So when did the change take place? I don't know. I don't know what they had back then okay. versus what they have so now. So then let's keep but it simple. I, let's go to Tawheed. But, know, but can, let's let me okay, talk for a ahead. second. Well, go ahead. What I, what I do know is that there were many Christians like Suhaid or Rumi, like the Nijas of Ethiopia who were Christian and they became Muslim. And how do so, you know that? Because it's in the biography of the Rasulullah. The, the one I just read for you that said that John wrote down the gospel of Jesus? I'm not disputing that. What I'm saying is there were Christians who became Muslims okay, but and there are Christians who came. You're not hearing yourself. Christians so you admit John's gospel is the gospel of Jesus then? Like I said, the gospel refers to the gospel given to Jesus. Okay, now, but the biography saying, that you quoted. i everything in John is, is Isa, not. you're not listening. The gospel that I told you is the gospel of Jesus, John wrote, comes from the biography that you just appealed to to prove that Christians became Muslims. The same Sirat Rasulullah that told you Christians became Muslims is the same Sirat Rasulullah that says John's gospel is the gospel that God gave to Jesus. Okay, I'm not disputing that. So you admit John's gospel is the gospel of Jesus? But I'm not saying that it's 100% accurate though. Ibn Ishaq did not say the, it's not 100% accurate. Don't spin it. He didn't say it was either. No, he said it's the gospel that God gave to Jesus. Okay, but... That's what he said. But what I'm telling you is we don't know it, that that's 100 percent accurate because it's not even. Yes, in the we do. Language. Because we have copies. Is it, is we have it, copies. Is it Hebrew? There we, go now. we have copies of John before, during and after Muhammad that are identical to what we read today. Is and it in Hebrew? That's my question. Who said John wrote in Hebrew? Show me where it says no, he wrote in Hebrew. Jesus spoke in Hebrew. So, so wait, hold on. So what, what language does Jesus speak in your Quran? Jesus spoke in Hebrew. In your Quran, what language is he speaking? I don't understand the question. Doesn't your Quran quote Jesus and the disciples? Yes. What language does the Quran have them speaking? Arabic. But Jesus didn't speak it's, Arabic. But, but those are the words Jesus of Allah. did not speak Jesus. Arabic. I understand that, but those are the words of Allah telling us what Stop Jesus said. Stop begging the question. We don't believe Allah revealed any book because we don't believe Allah is God. You just destroyed your argument because you just said Jesus spoke Hebrew, therefore it should be in Hebrew. But when your Quran quotes Jesus in Arabic, a language he didn't speak, now it's okay because Allah revealed it. If I'm telling a story, now my language is English, and someone else spoke a different language, I'm going to tell it in English. So then that change your really. argument. John is writing to Greeks in Greek. Well, so I'm change saying your you argument. don't have the original gospel of jesus that's in hebrew that's my point you, you, and when you, my friend, it, you, you don't need me. the original gospel of jesus because jesus didn't write down anything he preached and lived the gospel and his followers wrote it down that's what ibn ishaq said you want me to read ibn ishaq again down either but his companions wrote down what he said in okay Arabic, but you're, you're not listening Isa, stop so going in a thousand directions gospel. refocus ibn ishaq said john wrote down the gospel of jesus and what john wrote was in greek not hebrew Okay, now let's come back to Tawheed because you, okay. you changed the subject because you ran from Tawheed. Okay. No. Okay, do you, do you want to read chapter Surah An-Nisa, chapter 4, 171, or do you want us to read it for you? You can read it. Okay, go to Surah An-Nisa, chapter 4, verse 171. Now. Surah An-Nisa? Yeah. And which verse? 171. All right. All right, verse 171 in Surah An-Nisa, in Arabic and then in English. Ya ahl al-kitab la taghlu fi dinikum wa la taqulu ala Allah illa al-haq. Innama al-Masih Isa ibn Maryam Rasulullah wa kalimatuhu alqa ila Maryam wa ruhun minh. Fa'aminu billahi wa rusulih wa la taqulu thalatun. Intahu khayran lakum. 
إنما الله إله واحد سبحانه أن يكون له ولد له ما في السماوات وما في الأرض وكفى بالله وكيلا In English O people of the scripture do not exaggerate in your religion and do not say about God except the truth The Messiah, Jesus son of Mary is the messenger of God and his word that he conveyed to Mary and a spirit from him Can we pause so right believe- there real quick? Pause right there because yeah. I want to ask a question. He just read in Arabic and English. It says, Jesus is karimatuhu al-qaha illa maryam. The, his word, Allah's word, sent down to Mary, ruhin min, ruhin min, a spirit from him. Now, do you agree that Jesus is God's word that came down to Mary according to this verse? That's what the Quran says. So Good. Course. So you agree with that? Yeah. And he came as a spirit from Allah because that makes sense, right? Because he only became flesh when he's born of Mary, right? Yeah, but you have to understand what the word of Allah means. Okay, it the says way, the word the that came down. It's different than how we interpret it. We interpret it as meaning that Allah said be, and then he was, and he was. Yeah, I, uh, I know that's how you like to in interpret the, it. In the womb of Mary. That's how so you like to interpret be, it. So here that we go again. Isa, of the, yeah. I don't care how you interpret it. Read the verse again. It says his word that came down. It didn't say he said be and he came to exist in Mary's womb. It says his word that came down. Well, like I said, we have to look at the tafsir of Ibn Kathir because you can't interpret the verse for us. Is Ibn Kathir, do you say la ilaha illallah, Ibn Kathir Rasulullah? No, of course not. You know that. Let me explain Can you stop boring me with Ibn Kathir comes 700 years later? And because I'll use Ibn Kathir against you in a minute. Can you explain the Arabic? Because you said Arabic, right? He read the Arabic for you. The Arabic says, Karimatuhu al-qaha illa maryam. His word that came down, not the word that created him in the womb. Okay, you're saying the word that al-qaha does not mean come down, by the way. Yes, it does. It means to, it means to throw something. Al-qa oh, even better. Throw, 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 throw down, right? Uh, even better. Anzal, anzal means to send down. Okay. Even to, better. To throw something. So, so you believe? Wait, wait. Listen to yourself. So Allah threw Jesus down. Good. Threw him down from where? Okay. Hold on. One second. So the word he said be and he was. That's not what it says in four one seventy one. Show me where it says be and he was in four one seventy one. That's not what it said. Four one seventy one. Let me get to the ayat. One one second. Yeah, read it. Four one seventy one. So that the Nisa one seventy one. Okay. Oh, people of Scripture, do not exaggerate in your religion. Do not say about God except the truth. The Messiah Jesus, the Son of Mary, is the messenger of God and His word that He conveyed to Mary and the Spirit from Him. By the way, you got somebody here with an Arabic name before you read. Uh, do me a favor. Don't tell me how to discuss because I'll get you blocked. Yeah, right, I'm, but paying anyway. I'm paying yeah, attention. I'm paying Because he's another dog that's barking. Now, Isa, read that again slowly. What did it say about Jesus? A spirit from him. So believe. Oh, no, sorry. read the first part before uh, spirit from Jesus, him. Jesus, the son of Mary, is the messenger of God. And his word that he conveyed to Mary. Thank you. There you go. Where does it say, and he is the creation of Allah's word, kun fayakun? It does not say that in this verse here. And it says he came as a spirit from him. So how did he come as a spirit from him if he wasn't already with him as a spirit that then came from him into Mary? Okay, so the belief in Islam is that Jesus is the creation of Allah. There's no doubt about that. Yeah, there is a okay. lot of doubt because the Quran just contradicted you. That's how you interpret it. That's that's what I'm trying to tell okay, you. Okay, then refute you me from the text. Can I, can, I, can I please speak? Okay. Well, if you you're going to refute me from the text, you can on, speak all on. you want. Hold on. Let me let me just speak because I can't speak. I can't get my point across. Go ahead. Okay. The whole point I'm trying to make is this Quran is not trying to force each and every human being to be Muslim. It's giving you the scripture is giving you the verses and it's saying look the choice is up to you you can believe it or you can disbelieve what's that got so to you, do with answering the question i'm trying to ask a question okay if so someone answer, wants to believe we can explain it so that they can understand what 
this verse means. If you don't accept that explanation, then you just will you'll be a disbeliever, and that's the end of the story. No, what? So wait, you can't. You're you saying can't, it's up to you to explain it. You, what you're trying to do is you're trying to disprove Islam, and you can't do that. Only Why thing can't you can I? do is you can disbelieve, and you can influence other people to disbelieve, but you can't disprove Islam because we know how to interpret our verses. Did you notice I gave you a chance to rant and you didn't answer my question? This is why I keep cutting you off because I know you're going to do this. I just let what's you your, speak. What's your question? Because if I can't speak, what's I can't your question? Point, what my question is? So wait, you said, let me let you make your point and answer my question. I let you speak and you went on a tangent. Let's try this again. Show me from your Quran where it says Jesus is God's word because Allah created him by his command, kun fayakun. And you went on a tangent. Okay, this verse right here explains that, that Jesus is the word. That came down, Allah. right? It doesn't say sent down. It says, thrown down, it says even, he's even more powerful, that he right? conveyed to Mary. Can, wait, wait, didn't you just say it says throw down, but so you go with the word convey now. But earlier you said, no, it means throw down, now you want to go with convey. Well, yeah, the word the, by itself is to throw something. The but Arabic, it, the Arabic it, is al qaha He admitted. Al he Allah said he didn't say nataqaha, al qaha There is a difference. Yeah, he admits it means to throw down. So when he was thrown down, it says he was thrown down as a spirit from him. Right? Yeah, but the Muslims believe that he is the messenger of Allah. But he's more than that because he's the word of Allah and spirit of Allah. In fact, if we want to go now to your tradition, two of the names given to Isa in Islamic tradition is Karimat Allah, Ruh Allah. Agree? Okay, so can I ask can I ask you a question now? You've asked me a lot of questions. Can I ask you a question now? You're so you're admitting you can't defend Tawheed, so we can change the subject. I'll change it, but admit you can't defend Tawheed. I can defend Tawheed. So That's but why are you changing right the subject when you didn't finish this, the this point? Conversation. I'm asking, the question I'm going to ask you is yes. to defend Tawheed. Go I'm ahead. asking you, are you trying to say that Jesus is God? I'm saying your Quran says he's the eternal word, and just like the Quran is supposed to be eternal, if Jesus is uncreated, then that means he's not a creature. He must be God and one with God. But you can't use the Quran to try to prove your, your belief that Jesus sure is God. Sure I can. I just did. We know how to, first of all, you have to be knowledgeable in Arabic. You have to be, you have to have the Quran memorized. You have to. Have you memorized all the Quran? The, what, what's your qualifications for in Arabic? Have you memorized all the Quran? No, I'm saying for you. To so why are you, why are you engaging me in discussion? Why don't you leave? Let me ask you a question. Wait, 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 wait. No, no, no. Why are what's you here? Why don't you leave? You're not qualified to be talking about Dean because you just said. You need to memorize the Quran in Arabic, and you said you haven't memorized it. So why are you here? I'm saying you want to use the Quran to try to prove that Jesus is God or the Son of God. You have to at least have a good grasp of the Arabic language. What, what is your qualification? No, that's you not what you said. Degree? You said memorize the Quran. Degree? No, no, no. You said memorize the Quran in Arabic. So now if you want to prove to me Tawheed is true, you must memorize the Quran in Arabic and the Hadith in no, Arabic, no, no, none of which no, you've no. done. I'm saying, for, okay, the scholars in Islam, scholars. Are you a scholar? Have the most right to speak about Islam. Okay, are you a These, scholar? No, I'm not a scholar. So you have no right to speak about Islam. Why are you here? But I, but I'm, I have a right, of course. You have everyone has a right to speak whatever they believe. But I'm so why did you go on another tangent? To prove no. that the Quran is that's a big that's a big uh, assumption or, or so. Big, let, uh, let's let's take what you just said, because I want everyone to hear it. The only way you can be qualified to ever use the Quran is if you memorize it in Arabic and memorize no, the Hadith. I didn't say that. I did not say okay, that. Okay, so then let's I'm get off the tangent. Let's go back you, to the point. It, I'm, I'm asking you a question. What is your qualification in Arabic? Do you have a bachelor's degree? I don't or need a to have, have a qualification because the Quran claims that it is plain and fully detailed. It, but you're, someone can you're trying to explain the Quran in a way that's different than we, than we explain it. So if you're going to do that, you okay, have to now, have Isa, can you be honest and admit? Can you be honest and admit that even your scholars, even if you go to Tabari and Qurtubi and Ibn Kathir, you will note that even when they explain a verse of the Quran, they'll give you multiple explanations by multiple companions of Muhammad or the Tabi'in because there isn't one definite explanation of the verses. In fact, I'll give you just any verse. I'll say, go to this verse. Bring up Tabari, and it'll give you at least three and four ver explanations of a verse. What are you talking about? I agree. I agree. I Say agree, it again. Agree. The, 
That's true. Yes, that's true. So notice what you just said. Even if I go to your scholars, they're going to tell me, well, this verse can mean this according to so-and-so, but then it also can mean this according to someone else, but it also can mean this according to someone else, Allahu Adam. How am okay. I getting clarity if your scholars can't even agree what the verse exactly means? You just disproved your whole point. No, I even, disproved your appeal explain, to scholars, not me. You're not listening. If we, take this, if we take this verse, for example, and let's say we have three different opinions about what it means, none of those opinions will tell you that this means that Jesus always existed and he came down. Sure, of course they won't say God. that. But can I tell you what Ibn Kathir said? Do you know why chapter 3, verse 7 was revealed, supposedly? Where it says that there are verses that are clear. They're the mother of the book, and there are verses that are unclear. And those who are perverted at heart focus on the unclear passages, even though only Allah knows their meaning. Chapter 3, verse 7. You know why that was revealed? Tell me why it was revealed. According to Ibn Kathir and Tabari, because the Christians from Najran used the verse I just used against you, they use it against Muhammad. They said, wait, Muhammad, you say Isa is karimat Allah, ruh Allah. Therefore, you just prove Jesus is God. Because if he's the word and spirit, that means he existed before he became flesh. You know what your prophet okay. said? He said, oh, that's an unclear verse. No one knows what it means except Allah. Stop using it. He got okay, busted. Okay, Sam, can I ask you a question? Sure. Using that, that, very same, that very same situation that you're describing, where the delegation from Netran of Christians came to Medina after they debated Prophet Muhammad gave them a clear solution. He said, look. No, he didn't. Let's, let, let me finish. Let me Go finish. finish. He didn't because you're he not said, listening. Go ahead. Let me can I finish. Can I finish? Go ahead. He said, let us both sincerely pray to God that who's yeah. ever lying that Allah sent his curse down upon them. And they refused <sighs> okay. to do this. No, I know why they refused. I have your context. Notice you changed the subject again. Let's go back it's to 3-7. You, you talked about the delegation. Let's go trying, back right? to 3 7 Isa, you're wasting my time. Let's go back to 3-7. Why is it when your prophet got that, busted? Why, why is it when your prophet got busted by the Christians and they use his own words that Jesus is the word and spirit of God to prove he's God? Only then your prophet came with the excuse, well, there are some verses that are unclear. No one knows what they mean. Why is it only when he got busted did he come up with that excuse? Okay. Let me go to the top here. You Wait. said it's... Chapter 3, verse 7. Verse 7. Read. I have it here with me, but go ahead. I'll let you read it. Okay, you can read it. Go ahead. Okay, let me get it for you then. Are you reading in English or Arabic? English. Okay, well, okay, let me get it for you. Hold on one second, buddy. Even Tabari says the same thing, but let me get it. One second, buddy. Let me pop it up from my article where I quote him. And you can confirm that I'm quoting him accurately. I'm not misquoting him. There you go. All right. Okay. Let me go to 3.7. Here it goes. All right. I'm going to tell you what part I'm reading from. Seeking al-fitna. Do you see that part? Separating seeking al fitna from Ibn Kathir. Um, I don't a, see that okay. part. I just I just see the verses and the explanation under it. Okay, well here it says because each paragraph he has an explanation. It says they follow that which is not entirely clear thereof, meaning they refer to the mutashabih, because they are able to alter its meaning to conform with their false interpretation, since the wordings of the mutashabihat encompass such a wide area of meanings. As for the muhkam ayat, they cannot be altered because they are clear and thus constitute unequivocal proof against the misguided people. This is why Allah said, seeking al-fitna, and now Ibn Kathir, meaning they seek to misguide their following by pretending to prove their innovation by relying on the Quran. The that's what you're doing. Okay, well, that's, let me finish that's, it. That's you, you, exactly so you're cutting me off. Yeah, that means you're scared. Let's see if you're not scared meaning the mutashabiha of it, but this is proof against and not for them. For instance, Christians might claim that Isa is divine because the Quran states that he is Ruh Allah and his word which he gave to Mary. All the while ignoring Allah's statements, he was no more than a servant. We granted our favor to him. Verily, the likeness of Isa before Allah is the likeness of Adam. 
He created him from dust. Then he said to him, be, and he was. So do you agree that chapter 3, verse 7 has in mind the statement that Jesus is the word of God and the spirit of God, which Christians were using to prove Jesus is divine? Do you agree this is what it's referring to? Yes. Say it again. Yes, I agree. Okay, now two things. Didn't you just say to me that Jesus is the word of God because he's created by the command of God, right? Because he's created by saying by Allah saying be. That's what you said, right? Yeah. You just contradict the Quran because Allah said those verses only Allah knows what they mean. How did you know what it means? Because when Allah wants to create something, he says be and it is. You didn't hear, hear my question. Mind. See, Isa, pretend you're hearing me. Chapter 3, verse 7 says, those unclear verses, only Allah knows what they mean, no one else. But you just said, you know what it means for Jesus to be the word of God. But Allah just said, that's an unclear verse. No one knows what it means except Allah. How do you know what it means then? There are other places in the Quran where Allah describes how he created Jesus, not just this verse. No, it doesn't and describe it. But can you answer the question for me? When the Christians said, Muhammad, you say Jesus is the word of Allah and the spirit of Allah. That proves he's divine. He's not created. Then the response from your God, because you believe Allah revealed it, those are unclear verses. Don't use them because no one knows what they mean except Allah. But you just told us that Jesus is the word of God because Allah created him by his command. That means you know the meaning, but Allah says no one knows that what it means. So how do you know what it means? Okay, so you're using two different verses to try to prove your argument. Okay? No, that's three verse this, seven. This says, for example, it says, for example, they might use this this verse to try to prove that Jesus is Okay, the, let me quote Tabari because you know you're trying to Lord. switch it. He's a law or the son of God or something okay, like that. Okay, but hold on. Okay. Weren't is you appealing to Ibn Kathir to me all this time? Now that Ibn Kathir says that this is an example of unclear verse, Ibn Kathir is wrong? You're the one who no, kept going Ibn Kathir. No, I'm not saying he's wrong. So do you agree I'm, it's an I'm unclear verse? When I said that Jesus was the word is the word of Allah because Allah said be and he was, that's not from this verse. It could be from You want to bet? Verse. Let me quote Tabari. You want to bet it is? Tabari. This is Tafsir Tabari on 3.7. Let me read it for you. Ready? Yes. Opinion. Some of them said this verse referred to the Christian delegation from Najran, which came to the messenger of God to debate with him over what they debated and argue with him saying, do you not claim that Jesus is spirit of God in his word? They interpreted these words in a manner consistent with their statement of disbelief. On account of those who said that, Al-Muthana, Ibn Ishaq, Ibn Abi Jafir, his father, Al-Rabbi, they were resolute, meaning the Christian delegation from Najran that came to the messenger of God, and they argued with the prophet saying, do you not claim that Jesus is the word of God and the spirit from him? The prophet replied, but of course, they said, this is sufficient for us. Then God, mighty and majestic, is he sent down, but those in whose hearts is doubt pursue that which is ambiguous of it, seeking to cause dissension. Then God, majestic is his praise, sent down the verse beginning with truly the likeness of Jesus with respect to God is as the likeness of Adam. So Tabari says 3.7 was specifically sent down because the Christians were using the ayat that said Jesus is the word of Allah and a spirit from him. Okay. So now let me ask you again. Since Ibn Kathir and Tabari agree, or at least quote people that agree, chapter 3 verse 7, which refers to unclear verses, include the verse where Jesus is said to be the word of Allah and a spirit from him. That is an unclear, ver unclear verse. Only Allah knows what it means. So then do you now repent of telling me what it means when no one knows what it means except Allah? It doesn't say no one knows what it means except for Allah. That's, that's Can the I read chapter? Make... Okay, uh, do me a favor. I'll read 3 verse 7 for him because he's ignoring everything we're saying. Read 3 verse 7 to see if it says no one knows what it means except Allah. Chapter 3 verse 7. Right, you keep so saying it doesn't say that. Let's read. Surah Al Imran. I'm going to read it in Arabic first and then in English. Arabic, verse 7. Who and Ledi and Zala Alekal Kitaba Minhu Ayatun Muhkamatun, Hunna Ummul Kitabi wa Ocharu Mutashabihatun. For Amma Ledina Fikulubihim Zayun Fayatabiruna Matashabaha Minu Tira al Fitna, Wa Tira at Wile, Wamaya Alamuta Wila, who illa law, or Rasi Hunafil Elm. 
يقولون آمنا به كل من عند ربنا وما يذكر إلا أولو الألباب English It is he who revealed to you the book Some of its verses are definitive They are the foundation of the book And others are unspecific As for those in whose hearts is deviation They follow the unspecific part Seeking dissent and seeking to derive an interpretation but none knows its interpretation except Allah and those firmly rooted in knowledge. They say, we believe in it, all is from our Lord, but none recollects except those with understanding. So why did you just tell us it doesn't say that when it exactly says that? Well, it says none knows its interpretation except Allah and no that's, that's not what the end says there. it says and, and those who possess knowledge enough. say we believe all of it finish it that's what the verse says and those who have knowledge say we believe in all of it it doesn't say those with knowledge also know it says those who have knowledge say we believe in all of it the clear and unclear okay that does not exclude that they would say we believe in it all of it is from our lord Okay, what does that got to do with the point I was making? That the I'm unclear trying to verses, say none knows the meaning except for God, and that's that's not true because those who have knowledge know the meaning. That's not what that verse says. Now, interestingly, you just proved the corruption of the Quran because there is a qira, a different reading that does read that way, but the reading that is in your 1924 Cairo edition goes with the Hafs reading, which says none knows its meaning except Allah. And those possessed of knowledge say we believe in all of it. It is from our Lord. Okay, but it says here's and those and those firmly rooted in knowledge. Finish it. So no, no, don't stop. Then stop there. Finish it. Read they it. Say, say we believe in it. All is from our Lord. So read that part again. And those possessed of knowledge, what? Read it as a full sentence. Not stop it. I didn't. I didn't intend to stop but okay read, read it again fine. but none knows its interpretation except god and those firmly rooted in knowledge say we believe in it all is Thank from you. our lord you just made my case okay for the sake of argument let's say i agree with you i make your case well okay. you have to agree with me because you just read the english translation no the I, and I, part I hold on and. it says and, and okay let's go with your interpretation but, let me now read it the way second, Isa, read, let me I'll read it the way you read it please let me read it the way you read it None knows its interpretation except Allah, and those who possess knowledge say, we believe in all of it is from our Lord. So now you have Allah and those possessed of knowledge saying, we believe in all of it, it is from our Lord. So your God, Allah, with those who possess knowledge, is now saying, I believe in all of the Quran, it's because it's from my Lord. See what no, you just did? It, it says, Yaqulun, it means they. Okay, but uh, like but I said, I, I'll, I'll give it to you. Okay, fine. Okay. What you said, I'll okay. give it to you. Okay. Good. I don't, so, I don't want to. I don't want to stay on this argument. What I'm, what I'm asking you is, why did that delegation from that run of Christians, why did they refuse to gather with the Prophet Muhammad and sincerely pray to God that whoever is lying, that the curse of Allah or God comes down very upon them? Why they refuse? Because That's my question. Oh, very easy. Number one, that is, that is an argument of losers. When you get humiliated and you can't be. <clears throat> You can't defend your argument, then you invoke Allah's curse. See, that's the cowardly way out. Someone that's, who's winning an argument, opinion. let me finish okay, the point. You want me to finish the point or you want to chime okay. in? Someone okay. who's winning the argument doesn't need to invoke Allah's curse because I'm already schooling you and I'm humiliating you. It's only you when you get humiliated need to invoke the curse of your God to scare me. That's number one. That shows your prophet was losing badly. But they have nothing to lose. Okay, well, no, well, let me finish. And then the same tradition say the reason why they didn't take up the curse, it's not because they're afraid of your God. It's because they said, if Muhammad gets the upper hand, then he will come and attack us and kill us. So it's better that we pay jizya because your prophet had threatened them, sent them a letter saying, you better accept Islam or pay jizya or we will fight you. So they realized if we end up not submitting to him and paying jizya, that he's going to come and attack us and take our women and rape them and murder us and enslave our children. Better we pay the jizya. That's what your own tradition says. Okay. So now can we stop this cursing? Because it only shows how weak 
your position is. Can we get back to the issue? Number one, no one knows what it means except Allah. So don't tell me what that verse means. And number two, here's my question you didn't answer. Why is it that only after your prophet got caught using his own words against him, did he come up with chapter 3, verse 7? Why didn't your prophet say before the Christians came and said, Hey, Muhammad, you say Jesus, the word of God, spirit of God. Yes, you just proved he's divine. It's only after they confronted him with the verse that he came up with, Hey, these are unclear verses. Stop using them. Why is it he only came up with this excuse after he got busted? Why didn't he come up with that verse before it was used against him? Okay, I can answer that question very easily. Right. The Quran, the Quran was revealed not all at one time. It was revealed as situations. Hold on, buddy. I lost internet. Huh? You're back. Can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you now. Sorry, I lost connection. Can you guys hear me now? Can you guys hear me, everybody? Yeah, yeah I think. Al, can I you hear me now? No, I So, hold on. Yeah. Let me see if Al can. Okay, good. All right. Okay, now, you sure? You sure? You want to go with that argument? You pause it. I'm going to give you a. I'm going to give you a chance to think about it. Um. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to go with that. Are you sure? Um, yeah, I, th I think okay. I'm sure. Okay, good. So, okay, because the Quran was revealed piecemeal, Allah only decided to reveal this piece of the Quran after the Christians embarrassed your prophet by using his own words against them. Okay, I'll go with that. I'll go with that. I'll accept it. But now you just created a contradiction in the Quran. Let me explain to you why. Al, do me a favor. Go to chapter 41, verse 3 of the Quran. 41, verse 3. All right, Surat Fussilat, verse 3, Arabic. Kitabun Fussilat ayatuhu Qur'anan Arabiyan liqawmin ya'lamun. A scripture whose verses are detailed, a Quran okay. in Arabic for people who know. Okay, read that part again. A scripture whose verses are what? Detailed. Okay, detailed. Okay, explain. Okay, now go to chapter 16, verse 89. 16 verse 89 surah an-nahl right verse 89 wa yawma nab'athu fi kulli ummatin shahidan alayhum min anfusihim wa ji'na bika shahidan ala ha'ula'i wa nazzalna alayka al-kitaba tibyanan li kulli shay wa hudan wa rahmatan wa bushra lil muslimin on that day when we raise in every community a witness against them from among them and bring you as a witness against these, we have revealed to you the book as an explanation of all things. Emphasize that. Wait, wait. Yeah. This book, Quran, is an explanation of what? All things. Not some things, but all things, right? Right. And I'll go ahead, finish it. And guidance and mercy and good news for those who submit. Okay, now go to chapter 12, verse 111. 12, 111. Surat Yusuf, verse 111. Which is the last verse. لَقَدْ كَانَ فِي قَصَصِهِمْ عِبْرَةٌ لِأُولِي الْأَلْبَابِ مَا كَانَ حَدِيثًا يُفْتَرَى وَلَكِنْ تَصْدِيقَ الَّذِي بَيْنَ يَدَيْهِ وَتَفْصِيلَ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ وَهُدًا وَرَحْمَةً لِقَوْمٍ يُؤْمِنُونَ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ Now go ahead, translate. Right. In English, in their stories is a lesson for those who possess intelligence. This is not a fabricated tale, but a confirmation of what came before it and a detailed explanation of all things. Not some things. Detailed okay. explanation of all things. Detailed explanation. Okay, keep going. And guidance and mercy for people who believe. 
Two more I'm going to give this man so he doesn't tell me that's not what the Quran says. Now go to 1037. Chapter 10, verse 37 of the Quran. This is now Surat al Yunus. You're at Surat al Yusuf, now Surat al Yunus. 1037. Yunus, IF 37. Wa ma kana hadha al Quran an yuftara min This Quran couldn't have been produced by anyone other than Allah. In fact, it is a confirmation of what preceded it and an elaboration of the book. The no book, right? It elaborates on it. It explains it in detail, right. right? An explanation okay. exactly of the book. There is no doubt about it. It is from the Lord of the universe. Final one, 6, 114. Chapter 6, verse 114. Surah Al-An'am, verse 114. Okay, in Arabic. أَفَغَيْرَ اللَّهِ أَبْتَغِي حَكَمًا وَهُوَ الَّذِي أَنزَلَ إِلَيْكُمْ الْكِتَابَ مُفَصَّلًا وَالَّذِينَ آتَيْنَاهُمْ الْكِتَابَ يَعْلَمُونَ أَنَّهُ مُنَزَّلٌ مِنْ رَبِّكَ بِالْحَقِّ فَلَا تَكُونَنَّ مِنَ الْمُمْتَرِينَ Shall I seek a judge other than God when he is the one who revealed to you the book explained in detail? Explained in detail, huh? In detail. Explaining yes. all things, okay. Those to whom we gave the book know that it is the truth revealed from your Lord, so do not be of those who doubt. Now, Isa, we just read several verses, plain as day, and he read in Arabic, because you know Arabic. The Quran details all of its verses, not some of the verses. It explains all things, kulli shayn, all things, and it explains in detail everything that is mentioned in the book. So now, please help us understand, Isa. The Quran goes out of its way to say, this book explains everything, all things in detail, details its verses. And out of nowhere, a verse comes up saying, ah, but there are some verses that are unambiguous. They're not explained. No one knows what they mean except Allah. Reconcile that contradiction for me. I don't see it as being a contradiction. The verses, the verses that explain things in detail are separate from the verses that are ambiguous. Did you read so the there verses can, clearly? There, there, can, there can be two. There can be verses that no. explain in detail, and there can be verses that are ambiguous. Which part of the verse where it says, this book explains everything wasn't clear? It's very clear. So it everything, everything means it not everything. Everything with with its clear verses. That's not what the verse says. Doesn't say, it doesn't say that each and every verse explain everything in detail, does it? Yes. 12, 1, 11, 16, 89. You want us to reread it again? Uh, sure. Okay, go to 1689 again. Let's read. Let's start over again. Sixteen eighty-nine. I'll read it for you. Go ahead. Okay, 1689, on the day when we raise in every community a witness against them from among them and bring you as a witness against these, we have revealed to you the book as an explanation of all things. Wait, emphasize that again, Sam. E emphasize that part again because I want everyone to hear it. What does it say? We have revealed to you the book as an explanation of all things. It does not say that each and every verse. Okay, hold on. Is, is the, oh, hold on, let me ask you a question. So the unclear verses, is it part of all things or not? I don't understand your question. So if I say all things, all things, is then that inclusive? That means everything in the book? You're talking about two different things. It says... How am I talking about? I'm just telling you what all things mean. Read, the verse says, we have revealed to you the book as an explanation of all things. Except the own but, book. It doesn't explain itself, though. It explains everything else but the book. Okay, yeah. Now, can I ask you some questions now? Okay, now, before you ask me, though, and I'll let you right after this, can you tell me what verses of the Quran are unclear so that you don't waste your time focusing on them? Um, the scholars have said that the, the beginning of some of the, of the chapters that start with the letters, like Alif, Lam, Mim, for, for example, 
or Aleph Lam Ra. So the Quran doesn't the say that, right? Are, um, what's that? That's, you're not getting this from the Quran. You're getting it from the scholars again, right? Yeah, they explain the Quran. Okay, so the Quran says it explains all things, but it doesn't explain all things because there are verses unclear, and it fails to tell you what those unclear verses are. So you need scholars who come centuries after your prophet to tell you. Okay. If you're okay with that, hey, whatever floats your boat. So what's your question? Okay. So my question is, now, number one, it says, and I think you read this verse in, in the beginning, that the people who have a disease in their heart, when they read the same exact verses that someone who has a healthy heart reads, he gets a different meaning. Okay. And the Quran, like I said before, Islam was not uh, revealed so that each and every human being would believe in it. Okay. Oh, what was it Allah for? already knew that most people, not just some, but most people would disbelieve in it. Like, for example, most people disbelieved in, in Noah and Moses and Abraham and all these prophets. Most people disbelieved in them. And they all had their arguments like you have your argument. So my question to you is, what is your excuse for why you don't believe in the final messenger Muhammad? All that I showed you, you still don't know what my excuse is because your Quran is full of contradictions, errors, and it has a lot of gross immoral teaching. But before I even show you, okay, you just said Allah knew. Are you sure he knew or according to you as a Sunni, he actually predestined who would be an unbeliever? Qadr. Because you're not yes. a Quran only knows, Muslim. Allah knows everything. No, Qadr is not simply Allah knows everything. It's Allah predetermined what will happen. Okay, but you didn't ask my question. No, you but I want you to get it right. I want everyone to understand. Destination question. I will answer ask, your question. Isa, I'm asking you, okay, uh, as, as someone follows the Bible, right? Yeah. You're supposed, to, you're supposed to believe in all of the prophets, correct? Yeah, but who said Muhammad is a prophet? He contradicts the Bible. I'm, I'm getting to that. I'm getting to that. Okay. So if a prophet comes and he does not say what you like, is that a reason to disbelieve in him? Or no, if he, if he contradicts comes, the prophets before him, then he's a fake. That's what the prophet said. If someone okay, comes, so how? that's my question. How did he contradict the prophets? Before you sure him? about huh? that? Because if I here, look, I'm a, I'm I'm more of a prophet than your prophet. Here, I'm going to prophesy. I'm not going to show you how Muhammad contradicts the Bible, and you're going to tell me the Bible's corrupt. You're not going to prove I'm a prophet. You ready? I'm now going to show you how your prophet contradicts the Bible. And when I do that, you're going to say, well, your Bible's corrupt. You ready? Because now you're going to prove I'm a prophet because I just prophesied over you. You ready? I'm ready. That's why okay. I'm here. Yeah, so why do I reject Muhammad? Because he contradicts the Bible. The Bible that shows that Muhammad cannot be a true prophet sent by the same God that sent the prophets and sent his son, Jesus. Because here, let me show you. Let's go to John 10, 36. Let's see what Jesus says. John 10, 36. Read it for me, Al, if you don't mind. All right. Gospel of John 10, 36. Yep. Hey, verse 36 says... Are you saying of him whom the Father sanctified and sent into the world, you are blaspheming because I said I am the Son of God? So here Jesus says, I am the Son of God. That's one. Now, can you go to John 6, 35? Can, can you stop well, no, well, before you, no, let me make the point. Hold on. No, no. Let me make the point. Then you can address it. John 6, 35 to 40. All right, John 6. Is what Jesus claimed to be the Son of God? Because now I'm going to ask you a question. Jesus speaking. Now you're going to prove I'm a prophet because you're going to say it's corrupt. Watch John 6, 35 to 40. Um, verse 35, Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. The one who comes to me will not be hungry. And the one who believes in me will never be thirsty. But I said to you that you have indeed seen me and yet you do not believe. Everything that the father gives me will come to me. And the one who comes to me, I certainly will not cast out for i have come down from heaven not to do my own will but the will of him who sent me and this is the will of him who sent me that of everything that he has given me i will lose nothing but will raise it up 
on the last day. So wait, before you move on, so you can understand what I'm about to ask him. Jesus said he came down from heaven to give life to all who believe in him, and he will raise them, resurrect them on the last day. Yom al Qiyamah, Jesus will raise them up on the last day. I just wanted right. to hear what Jesus said. Now finish it. Go all the way to 40. Verse 40. For this is the will of my Father, that everyone who sees the Son and believes in him will have eternal life, and I myself will raise him up on the last day. So the dear prophet agree, Jesus is the Son of God who came down from heaven, and that Jesus, the Son of God, will, at the last day, he will resurrect the dead at the last day. Okay. Now, did the earlier prophets ever say that God had a son? Yes. Proverbs 30, verse 4. Go show them. Yes. Go to Proverbs 30, verse 4. Proverbs 30, verse 4. Mm-hmm. It's actually an amazing uh, one. So Proverbs 30 verse 4 says, Who has ascended into heaven and descended, who has gathered the wind in his fists, who has wrapped the waters in his garment, who has established all the ends of the earth, what is his name or his son's name? Surely you know. Read it one more time so you can know that he's talking about God. Read it one more time. Who has ascended into heaven and descended, who has gathered the wind in his fists, who has wrapped the waters in his garment, who has established all the ends of the earth, what is his name or his son's name? Surely you know it. Now go to Psalm 2, verse 7 and 12. Psalm 2, verse 7 and 12. Okay, verse 7 says, I will announce the decree of the Lord. He said to me, you are my son. Today I have fathered you or I have begotten you. Depend on the verse, 12. verse 12. Kiss the son that he not be angry and you perish on the way for his wrath may be kindled quickly. How blessed are all who take refuge in him. So Jesus said he's the son of God that came down from heaven. And he, as the Son of God, will resurrect the dead at the last day. Did your prophet agree with that? Of course not. So you see why I said that according to my Bible, your prophet is an antichrist. So you said that Moses is, is an antichrist as well? No. Because the, the Jews did not believe that Jesus was the Son of God. And they, so, they wait, knew so Jesus, they knew you're admitting Jesus existed at the time of Moses? I want everyone to hear this. So you believe Jesus existed at the time of Moses? I didn't say that. Okay, so how do you expect Moses to know the name Jesus when that's the name given to him at his birth? That's his human name. So you're admitting that, G that Moses did not pray to Jesus, correct? No, I admit Jesus was there, and Moses knew Jesus, but not as the name Jesus. He knew him as an angel of the Lord. Who did he pray to when he directed his prayer? He prayed to the Who angel of the Lord to? as his God. I'm answering you. He prayed to the angel of the Lord as his God because they knew this angel wasn't a creature but the messenger sent by the Father who was their God. Go to Genesis 48, 15 to 16. Let me show you who they pray to. Genesis 48, 15 to 16. So you didn't answer my question again, right? But it's okay. No, I'll, I'll answer. What's the question again? Okay, so as far as the words of Jesus in John, as he goes to Genesis 48, 15 to 16, this is Jacob praying for his grandchildren, the sons of Yusuf. As far as Jesus saying, I came down from heaven, I was in heaven and I came down. And I'm the son of God who will raise the dead at the last day. Do you agree that the Quran and your prophet contradict those words? I agree, yes. And so from a Christian perspective, it doesn't believe in your Quran, but the Bible. Do you see why now I reject your prophet as an antichrist? I don't because Abraham, Prophet Muhammad had the same exact belief as Abraham. No, he didn't. I'm going to show you Abraham. Abraham Abraham no, he never didn't. taught his followers that Jesus would resurrect the dead. You want to bet? Let me show you what Jesus says about Abraham and show you where Jesus appeared to Abraham. Let's go to John 8, 56 to 59. See, you're only digging your hole deeper when you keep telling me this stuff because you don't know my Bible. But let me show you what Jesus said about Abraham and then show you where Jesus appeared to Abraham. John 8, 56 to 59. All right, verse 56 reads, Your father Abraham was overjoyed 
that he would see my day and he saw it and rejoiced. Now, before you go on, do you believe that? What Jesus just said, that Abraham saw him and he saw G Abraham and Abraham rejoiced at seeing Jesus. Do you believe that? I can't say I believe that because it's not, like I said, it's not in the original form. So you just no. proved I'm a prophet. Al Masihu Akbar. Didn't I not just I say? Didn't, no, I didn't say it's corrupted. Okay, so is that corrupt? I didn't is say that corrupt? corrupted. I said, I can't, I can't affirm that that's true because I'm not sure that that is the authentic words okay, so of Jesus. You just, Al Masihu Akbar, because you now doubt its authenticity. Authenticity. I just said that's what you're going to do. No, you, you said I would say it's corrupted. I didn't say it's corrupted. So when you say, I don't know if it's authentic, said, what are you saying? I said, I'm not, I can't, if someone says I can't confirm or deny. Sure. Okay, good. Because even if I say, if I said I confirm sure. that those are the words of Jesus, okay. we also have to look now, what did he mean by those oh, words? Oh, very you easy. Have, He's going to tell you what he meant. He doesn't need your you scholars to know. interpret. He doesn't need you your have, scholars to interpret. Read on. John 8, 56 to 59. You don't have Jesus explaining those John, Yes, verses. he does in 58. Be patient before you embarrass yourself further. He does. John 8, 56 to 59. Read it. All right. 57. So the Jews said to him, you are not yet 50 years old and you have seen Abraham. Jesus said to them, truly, truly, I say to you, before Abraham was born, I am. Therefore, they picked up stones to throw at him, but Jesus hid himself and left the temple grounds. So did you hear what Jesus just said when they asked him? Well, let me finish what he said before you jump in because you think you're going to refute me. Esau, listen, because you're not going to refute me. You're going to end up proving my point if you're listening. When they told him, you're not yet 50 years old, you've seen, Ab you've seen Abraham, Abraham's been dead for 2,000 years. And Jesus says, truly, truly, I say to you, before Abraham was born, I am. Meaning, yes, I was there before Abraham was born. So, yes, I saw him and he saw me. So he doesn't need your scholars to interpret. He interpreted his own words. Do you agree with it? Can I ask you, okay, can I ask you a question? But do you agree with it before I you do? I agree with what again? Do you agree that Jesus was there before Abraham was created? Of course not. Okay, good. Well, let me ask you. So wait, 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 wait. Before I'll let, let you ask me. Why? Just hold on. You just said, of course not. That means you believe these words are false, right? I believe that your interpretation of that is is not accurate. And let me explain why. The how many followers did Jesus have? What does that got to do with Jesus' words? I'm just, just I'm asking you a question. I'll, I'll get to that if you answer the question. Approximately. You don't have to tell me the exact number. Whatever he had, he had. Okay. Okay, but you would agree that the majority of the Jews did not believe in him, correct? Okay, just like the majority of the Jews didn't believe in Muhammad, then? Eh? Okay, I agree with that. But my point what is, is that if these if these verses that you're giving me from the Old Testament, from the Torah and the Old Testament, if, if they are so clear that the meaning is what you're trying to make it out to be, why did the majority of the Jews reject Jesus then? Okay, very good. That means you just proved the Quran is a lie because the majority of Jews rejected Muhammad, which means the Quran is not clear and it's false according to your logic. Good logic, man. Can you ask the question now? I just answered it. If you're consistent and you're basing it on Jewish rejection, you just destroyed the Quran because the majority of the Jews rejected the Quran. So per your logic, that means the Quran is unclear. It's Babel, which is why the Jews didn't believe in it. Because no, if it was that, clear, they would have believed in it. It's just like comparing apples and oranges. Because the Jews, How are you the comparing apples and oranges when it's the same logic? The, hold on, let me explain. The reasons why the Jews, the majority rejected Muhammad, is different than the reason why... No, the, the reason why they reject Muhammad is because he contradicted their Torah. No, that's not it. Yes, that's it. No, that's not it. Okay. Show me in the Quran why they rejected him. Show me in the Quran why they rejected him. It's not contradictory to Torah. Yes, he did. The reason why they rejected Muhammad was because they wanted the prophet to be, to be, uh, to be from their lineage. Okay, now, from where in their Torah does it say a prophet will come from <clears throat> the Arabs in their Torah? You're just making my case, which you're, you're realizing it. They rejected him the because the Torah to never said an Arab would come and be the final messenger. I don't have their Torah, but... Muhammad is prophesized in the Torah, of course. Which Torah? What verse? Where and when? If you don't have don't, it, how do you know? I don't know. I don't have the Torah. I'm not, okay, I don't know right. Hebrew. Okay, so now let's Torah. come back to the I issue. no idea where... Let's where come back to the original question you asked me. Since Jesus contradicts Muhammad in the Bible that I believe is true, which you doubt, that's why Muhammad is a false prophet. 
even though he called the people to worship one God, you said he's a false prophet. You're assuming that because he says worship one God, Allah, that's the God of the Bible? And that's the same, that's the same first commandment that you have in the Bible. The so you didn't hear me, Isa. No children Israel, so you, your God Isa, you, you, God. you didn't hear me. You're pretending to hear me, which is why you're embarrassing yourself. If you were here, you wouldn't embarrass yourself. Just because your prophet called people to worship one God, that doesn't mean his God is the God of the Bible. This is what I'm proving to you. The God of the Bible is not Allah of the Quran. So I don't How can care. You say that? What? How can you say that? The God Very of the easy. Quran is the because the, the God the of the Bible, Just, let me answer you. Doesn't, doesn't the God of the me. Bible says that you are not to make a stone figure and venerate it. But your prophet made it sunnah for you to kiss and touch a black stone as part of Hajj. Yes or no? No. Are you lying to me? That's, that was something that started by Abraham, not Muhammad. Prove that Abraham started it. Show me in the Quran where it says Abraham went to I Mecca. can't prove that. I can't prove that. Okay. You, so you either believe or you don't let, believe. Let me repeat my point again. Like Isa, that, let's not talk past each other. Let me repeat my point again. The Torah of the Jews, Leviticus 26.1, told the descendants of Abraham... Do not take a sacred stone and venerate it. There is no way in hell that Abraham would then take a sacred stone and venerate it. That's Leviticus 26.1. But then your prophet comes and he kisses a black stone, touches it and weeps on it and says, this is what you are to do when you perform Hajj or Umrah, going against what the Torah says, the true God told Abraham and his descendants. That's why there's no way Allah is the God of Abraham. It's, no, it's, I can explain that. It's a very simple explanation, right. actually. Right. When it says don't venerate a stone, it means don't worship idols. So the people used to take the stones and make make figures of gods, and they used to worship them. And what did the no pagans do with the black, the black stone? stone? What no, did the no, uh, pagans do with the black stone? What did the pagans do with the black stone? Yeah. I have no idea. They worshipped it as part of their gods and goddesses because they had stones and idols. That's in your hadith. If they worship, that's, that's their business. But Muslims don't worship it. Uh, yes, you do, because you're doing what the pagans did. You're kissing it and touching it. You just said you didn't know what the pagans did. You said, Who told you well, that? The rights was, of Hajj the rights okay. of Hajj were observed by the pagans. Did the pagans not run around the Kaaba seven times and between Safa and Marwa seven times? That is a practice that was a carryover from the time Prove of Prove it. Prove that Ishmael settled in Mecca and he's the father of Muhammad. Prove it. I can't prove it. Okay, so you, stop you, you didn't believe it or not. But the point of it is, we don't worship idols. That's my point. No, yes, you and do. You when you kiss you, you a black stone it. and smother it, you are an idolater. You're a stone. How, say, say it again. When you kiss the black stone and touch it, you are worshiping it because that's what the pagans so did. When, that's when, part when of the worship. you kiss your wife, are you worshiping your wife? You kiss your now, wife? Yes, because my wife is a living being whom I'm supposed to show affection you to. Said, you, you just Let said me yes. finish so my you point. Don't talk over me because I'm going to embarrass you if you do. Let me – don't okay, talk sorry. over me because the word worship can have a broad range of meaning from a Christian perspective, not from the Islamic one. I know where you're going at. Been there, done that, got the T-shirt. Yes, I can show veneration to my wife because she's a living being in the image of God and I'm show, to show her affection. But a stone is a dead, inanimate object that even Omar, when he went to kiss it, said, I know that you're a stone that neither harms nor benefits. Had I not seen the messenger of Allah kiss you, I would not kiss you. So why in the world are you kissing a dead stone? Okay, you just said that you kiss your wife and you don't worship her, Correct. So my wife is not a dead inanimate object. I, I worship the black stone. You just you just added a Why are there, you so kissing saying, a black stone? It's not alive. That's your that's your explanation now. That's now you're Omar. Saying, oh, if it's alive, Omar said it. Saying, hold on, let me, let me finish. Now you're saying if it's alive, then it's not worship. No, you don't twist dead, my words, buddy. Buddy, where, Isa, you're 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 wasting time now, and you're let me repeat what I said so you don't twist my words. Omar ibn al-Khattab said, when he went to kiss it, he started speaking to the stone, I know that you're a stone that neither harms nor benefits. Had I not seen the messenger of Allah kiss you, I would not have kissed you. So he even sees a problem with kissing a stone that's not an animate object. Whereas I'm commanded by God to show affection to my wife, like my wife is commanded to show affection to me because she's a living being 
who has value. What value does a stone have that neither harms nor benefits? You didn't explain that to me. Okay, but you added that. Now you're making another stipulation now. Okay. You're saying if it's alive, it's not worship, and you kiss it. Okay, but what's your next dead, question? Go ahead. Worship, what's your next question? Where is, that, where is that from? What's your next question? It's from Leviticus 26.1. I kept repeating no, it. No, Leviticus, uh, whatever that verse is, it says don't take a stone and venerate it. And that's why it's Abraham will not take a stone, a black stone, and have you venerate by kissing it. So what's your next question? Okay, so my next question is prove to me that Jesus is God. And how do you want me to prove it when you reject the Bible every time I quote it? That's your only proof? What other source do you have that talks about Jesus besides the Bible? The Vedas? No, what I'm asking is, is your only proof that Jesus is God, the Bible? It's yes, like me, ask, me asking you, is the only proof that Muhammad is a prophet your Quran? It's also common sense and intellect because... We what common sense and intellect? If your Quran didn't tell you Muhammad is a prophet, you wouldn't be wasting your common sense and intellect to try to prove he is because you have to have a source that tells you Muhammad is a prophet. In order for someone to have so much success in the span of 23 years, like Joseph to Smith, never right? lose, to never lose in, in a battle and to be able to So you measure success whole... by him killing people and raping their women and that's success? Let me, well, let me finish. Let me finish. Mm -hmm. For someone who... Is, has the the smaller number to be able to overcome a larger army over and over again and to change the you're whole full of it he lost at the battle of Uhud. I, let me finish he lost the battle of Uhud. you're full no, of didn't. it no he didn't yes he did it's not true. yes he did, did, did he even did got he his teeth them? broken did, did, did the muslims did, did they take over medina for example not at the battle of Uhud. they didn't Okay, so they didn't lose. It was a stalemate. Oh, a stalemate. Wait, but did your prophet's teeth get broken? Does that mean he lost? Answer the question. Yes, they did. But it is, so that your, your God allowed your prophet to be humiliated by having a scar what? on his face and his no, teeth broken, right, no, and that's not a loss. That's a victory. What My a beautiful questions. victory. Stop the games now. Come back to me. Let us let me show you how I know Jesus is God. Do me what, a favor, Al. Well, let me answer your question. Go to 57 verse 3. Chapter 57 verse 3 the crown. Let me show it to you in a minute. 57 verse 3. Mm -hmm. 57 verse 3. Okay, watch it. This is your time for a minute for you. Surah Al Hadid, Arabic. Yeah. He is the first and the last, and the outer and the inner, and he has knowledge of all things. Now, I know you know Tawheed al-Asma wa Sifat, and I don't have to explain it to you, you believe it, that there are names and characteristics that only belong to Allah. And here, first and last, al-awwal wal-akhir, first and last, that's the name of Allah alone. You can't disagree with me if you are a Salafi or you believe in Tawheed. Okay, so who's the first and last? Allah. Read Revelation 117 for me, uh, Brother Al. Revelation 117. Hold on a second. Hold can on. I, can, can I? Can there? I? Hold okay. on. No. Let me finish my point about Jesus. Then you can ask me fifty thousand questions. Revelation one seventeen. All right. Revelation one seventeen reads: When I saw him, I fell at his feet like a dead man, and he placed his right hand on my uh, on me, saying, "Do not be afraid. I am the first and the last." So here, Revelation agrees with the Quran that God is the first and the last. You agree? Yes. So again, you agree God here in Revelation is saying the first same thing that Allah is saying in the Quran, right? Yes. So Revelation 117, read it one more time for him. All right, Revelation chapter 1, verse 17. Yeah, stay on that when chapter. I, when I saw him, I fell at his feet like a dead man, and he placed his right hand on me, saying, Do not be afraid, I am the first and the last. So you would agree that here God is saying I'm the first and last, and that agrees with the Quran, right? I agree with your first statement, not that. That God is not the first and last? No, when you first said that, do you agree that God is first and last? I yeah. said, yeah, I agree with so that. So in Revelation 117, when God says I'm the first and last, do you have no problem with that? If you say God is the first and last... Then I agree with that. So can a creature Allah be the first and the last? Allah is the first and last. Okay, can a creature be the first and the last? 
Of course not. Of course not. Now read verse 18. Of course not. Good. Read verse 18. Okay, so I am the first and the last and the living one, and I was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore, and I have the keys of death and of Hades. You just said to everyone, no creature can say he's the first and last. So when did your God Allah die? He never died. He never will die. No, he just said he did. He said, I'm the first last who was dead and I live forevermore. And you said no creature can say that. So who's saying that? Who's saying that? I, I have no idea who's saying that. You don't know? Well, it's your God Allah. He's the first and last. He died and came to life. Allah is the first and last, no doubt. And but no doubt, the first last just said, I died and I live forevermore. Thank you. That's according to the verse you read. Sure, because you wanted me to prove why I believe Jesus is God from my Bible, and I did. Well, we already know it's impossible with Jesus the first because his father is Adam. His uh, great no, it's not impossible because he just said, I'm the first last and I died. You're saying Jesus said, I'm the first and last. He's the only and one that died, died and came to life. You want to read it again? Okay, I don't need to listen to anything Jesus says if I already know okay. from the Old Testament. So you just proved Adam my point, didn't you? I'm wasting my on. time because no matter Hold what on. I show you, it's it's not good enough. So you just proved my point. You just did what I just said. You proved I'm a I, prophet. I asked you in the beginning, prove to me that Jesus is God. And you said your only proof is the Bible. Which I just quoted. Okay. So, you, so you're telling me right now, your only proof that Jesus is God is from verses from the Bible. Well, is there a source outside the Bible that mentions Jesus? Give me that source. I mean, we have our reasoning, our intellect. How do you? How would your reasoning tell you that a Jesus existed? So in your own mind, you created a scenario where a Jesus existed. How do you know Jesus existed from your intellect? You know, you're, you, know, you know you're not making sense now, right? You need... A source that tells you that someone exists in order for you to know about the existence of that someone. So how do I know that a Jesus exists if there's not sources that tell me? So what sources tell me Jesus exists? I'm, I, well, I didn't ask you if he exists or not. That's not the question. I'm yeah, that is the question because saying, how do you prove why you even mention God? Jesus? Prove to me exists. All right, prove to me Jesus, Isa, Ibn Maryam exists. Prove it to me. I can prove it to you because Allah prove it. revealed that he existed. Uh, I don't believe Allah exists. Prove Allah exists. I'm an atheist. Prove it. Oh, well, that's easy because the creation is proof that there's a creator. Not proof that Allah created it. A creator, but not Allah. Prove to me Allah created it. Even if exactly. you don't agree that his name is Allah, then you have to admit that a creator created And that, that creator is, is the Hindu God. Prove me wrong. Okay, the Hindu God, when you say the Hindu God, what do you mean? The Hindus have like about 5,000 gods. No, they don't. About? At the highest level of Hinduism, it is one God. These are all manifestations of that one God. So prove to me it's not the Hindu God. You see, okay. this is well, the problem on. with your once argument. Again, once again, if you're saying that the Hindus have one ultimate God. Yep. Who is he? You're, you're proving my point. No, actually I'm not. I'm proving he's not Allah. Because the Hindu God can manifest as Shiva, Krishna, and Vishnu, none of which is Allah. So don't go there. He's not your God, Allah. When, when, when he manifests those gods that they believe that he manifests, mm -hmm. then at that point, then that's when we part ways. But okay, so now we, prove to me every, that when you parted single, ways, prove to me when you parted ways, your ways of parting is the right way, not theirs. Prove it. Okay. The proof of it is... If, every, if anyone was left in the rainforest, he didn't know any other creature on the, on the planet. Yes. He would know that he has a creator. One creator, right? That's not, that's not seen to him. And he would direct his worship up to the sky. Good, okay. Right. Signifying right. that the creator of the heavens and earth is above the skies. This is what. This is my point. Okay, Instant, well, let, let's go with this. I want to use your point. I want to use it. Let's stick on it. And so someone, when he looks at creation, will know that there's a creator, but would he come to the conclusion that that creator is a trinity? Of course not. Say it again. Impossible. Of course not. And you said impossible, right? How would someone say that there must be three gods? No, we don't and believe in three God, gods. Don't twist that, our words. That, no, no, that's that, not the trinity. Don't expose your ignorance. I just want you to repeat what you said. Someone left to his own, just looking at creation, 
would conclude there's a creator, but that creator is not a trinity. That's something he would not conclude, right? Left on his own, yeah, right? It's impossible. It's impossible. He would Say it again. That there must be a father and son partnership. Say it again. Impossible, right? I just said impossible. So yeah. no man can, on his own, come up with the trinity just looking at creation, right? Of course not. You just proved the trinity's revelation from God. Because if I man did. cannot come up with it, then that means man did not invent it. God revealed it. Thank you for he, destroying your that's, religion. That's actually, you proved my point. No, you proved mine. No you, let me repeat. Well, no, no, no. Don't talk over me. Let me repeat. You just said man left on his own can never arrive at the Trinity. Then where did the Trinity come from if man cannot arrive at it? God revealed it. You just buried yourself. Thank because you. Because man collaborated with, with one another. And How? Said, when man Jesus, cannot come up with the Trinity? Been, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to tell you right now. After okay. Jesus. What's your next question? together collaborated with one another and tried to explain what's your next question because you just destroyed your position so what's your next question oh i didn't know i did but yeah you did what's my, your next question my next question is is it is it is it plausible well is it plausible that muhammad and his followers who like i said had such success what success people, 13 years in Mecca, he couldn't convert the majority of people. What are you, what are you smoking? I'm, I'm, I'm explaining it to you right now. Yeah. Okay. So explain to me after why he was so unsuccessful in Mecca. Okay. After several attempts to assassinate him, he could have easily been killed by the Quraysh who... That didn't answer my question. Why was he so unsuccessful in Mecca? You didn't answer my question. I didn't say he was un unsuccessful in Mecca. He was very I, I'm successful telling you because he fled to Medina... And when he became the head of state, then he came with an army and took over Mecca. But while he was in Mecca preaching Islam, the majority rejected him. Why? Because the majority of the people disbelieved, like I told you in the beginning. So what kind of success is this that he has to run away and come back with an army to force them to submit? The success is that one person who was causing such a problem for the entire Good. For he the was entire, a problem, for the right? Entire society. Excellent. Let, Excellent. let me finish. Let me finish. Yeah. One person who was causing such a problem for the entire society, calling people to worship one God. No, that's not what he did. He did more than that. Don't well, misquote let me your finish. sources. Let me finish. No, but finish the yeah. reason. Why, no, no, finish the reason why they were upset with him. You're you're selectively citing what you like. Why were they upset with him? Not that he's preaching a law. You're lying to me. I have your sources. You're lying to me. That's not why they were upset. They were upset because he was telling them not to worship their idols. Not only not to worship, he was attacking their gods and goddesses and attacking their family values. Attack? They had no family values. What are you talking about? You mean that they didn't believe in marriage and they didn't believe in in honor and they didn't? Muhammad just invented that. No, well, they what they believed in was marriage, where someone, for example, ten people have a relationship with a woman and whoever the woman decides to, to be the father she she will marry okay. that man so i mean if it's instead of that, that we go with muhammad saying you can have up to four wives and unlimited sex slaves and also if you go to war and you attack a people and you take a married woman captive you can rape her so that's better yeah that's the same laws as the old testament right show me in the old testament where moses says you can take a married captive who's still married husband's alive and you can rape her well, show me where it says in Islam you can rape a woman in any situation. Chapter 4, verse show 24. Me. Surat the nisa chapter 4, verse 24. And we're going to read uh -huh. Sunan Abu Dawood, 424. You want him to read it or you want to read it? 424? Yes. It says, And all married women, except those you rightly possess, this is God's decree binding upon you. Permitted for you are those that lie outside these limits, Provided you seek them in legal marriage with gifts from your property seeking wedlock, not prostitution. If you wish to enjoy them, then give them their dowry, a legal obligation. Mm -hmm. You yeah. commit no error by agreeing to any change to the dowry. God is all knowing uh, most wise. Now read the first part of the verse again. And all married women, except those you rightfully possess. What does that mean? That means you can't have sex with a married woman, right? Slave, you're, you're a slave woman. 
So you can't have sex with a married woman except finish it. Except if she's your slave woman. So if there's a married woman that you've taken as a slave, though she's married, you can still have sex with her because you own her, right? Not necessarily. You want to bet? Sunan Abu Dawud Ibn Kathir says, that's why this verse was revealed. You want me now to go to Ibn Kathir? Please. Okay. Let me get you Sunan Abu, Abu, uh, Sunan Abu Dawud and Ibn Kathir. Let me read it for you. Hold on. And I'm going to give it to you to read too. Let's do that. All right. There it goes. Second, my friend. Here you go. Here's the link. I'm going to give it to you. And Al, Al, here's the link. You can post it for people if you want. And you want us to read it or are you going to read it? Let me get it to you on Skype. Hold on. Let me get it to you. You look at your chat in Skype. Here's the link. Asa, here's the link. Okay. Okay. Click on it. Can you read it or do you want us to read it? Uh, I can read it. Read it. And then give us the grading by Al Albani. What's the grading? Regarding intercourse with captives, Abu Sa'id al Khudri said the Apostle of Allah sent a military expedition to Altas on the occasion of the Battle of Hunayn. They met their enemy and fought with them. They defeated them and took them captives. Some of the companions of the Apostle of Allah, peace be upon them, were reluctant to have relations with the female captives because of their pagan husbands. So Allah the Exalted sent down the Quranic verse, and all married women are forbidden unto you, save those captives whom your right hand possess. Okay, so why was this verse revealed? And I just gave you Ibn Kathir. There's the link. I gave it to Alan Yu. It says the same narration. It's there in Ibn Kathir. And what's the grading, by the way? What did, how, what did Al Albani grade this hadith? As uh, Sahih. Sound, right? Yes. So according to your sound narration, why was this verse revealed? Because the Muslims had a war, and after they uh, prevailed in this war, they took captives, but these captive women were the wives of uh, the pagans who they had just uh, defeated in battle. Mm -hmm. So they, they, were, they weren't sure if they would, were able to have... Uh, sexual relations with them so for that reason the verse is revealed but you said okay well, hold on so wait well, hold on well, no, don't change it wait so you're okay with your god allowing muslims to have sex with married women taken captive though their husbands are still alive who said they were alive but let, okay let's uh, say, well, no, let's wait, say wait, wait. it just says right there their husbands were still alive and that's why they didn't want to touch them what are you talking about if their husbands are dead then they're not married it says here, relations with the female captives because of their pagan husband. It doesn't say they're alive. But I'll give you that. Let's say this. Let's say, let's Dude, say are you alive. serious? Okay. You serious? I'm, I'm reading right here. It doesn't say they're alive. Okay, hold on. One second. Hold on. Let, let's do this. Hold on. Let me go back. I, I already said I'll give it to you. They're alive. Okay. They're, so they're, are you okay with the fact that Muhammad and his followers had sex with married captive women? The ruling in Islam, this is the ruling of Allah, not man's ruling. Okay, so you're okay with Allah giving you that rule? I'm, 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 I'm going to explain to you. Okay, when the disbelievers engage in war with the Muslims, with the believers, then by doing that, they forfeit their wives because they engage in war yeah. with the I mean, you can believers. explain it away. I'm just saying, are you okay with it? You can just fight all you want. Are you okay with it? Well, yeah, I'm okay with it. Okay, so now, if let's say you're living at that time and you got into a war with Muhammad and his companions because you were a pagan, and then they took your wife captive, your daughter captive, your mother captive, and your father's alive, you, you're telling me your mother, your wife, and daughter would be okay that they now are taken captive and they're having sex with them with you still alive? Listen, if I agree to, to disbelieve in Allah and his messenger, then... I deserve whatever's coming to me. I would I would expect even okay. worse than that to happen to me. So even to your mother and your wife and your daughter, they deserve that. If I disbelieve in Allah and his messenger, I deserve even worse than that. That's my point. Okay, so even your mother deserves worse than that. 
if I disbelieved and she disbelieved as well, then that's 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 what they deserve. That's why you Muslims are dangerous. You just confirmed why Westerners should ban Islam in the West. And I want, I I'm glad it's why. reported. I, well, I thought that was, that was something you would agree with too, right? No, well, no, because my God, who is pure and holy and righteous, would never order his true followers to rape married captive women. He would not do Have that. Have you read the Old Testament? Before? Yes, Deuteronomy 21, 10 to 14. It shows that your prophet is beneath Moses. Deuteronomy 21, 10 to 14. Read it for him. So, thought, you, so no, nowhere in the Old Testament. Well, you know I'm answering you. Deuteronomy 21, 10 to 14. No, God does not allow it, the true God. Let's read it. Deuteronomy 21, 10 to 14. All right, verse 10. When you go out to battle against your enemies and the Lord your God hands them over to you and you take them away captive and you see among the captives a beautiful woman and are strongly attracted to her and would take her as a wife for yourself as a sex slave or as a wife as a wife Keep reading. then you shall bring her into your home and she shall shave her head and trim her nails she shall also remove the cloth of her captivity and shall remain in your house and weep for her father and mother a full month and after that you may have relations with her and become her husband and she shall become your wife. So can you have sex with her as a sex slave or you must marry her and make her your wife and you be her husband? It's clear, your wife. Okay, now keep reading. Verse 14, but it, uh, but it shall be if you are not pleased with her, then you shall let her go wherever she wishes. And you certainly shall not sell her for money. You shall not treat her as merchandise since you have humiliated her. Now, this was revealed 2,200 years before your Quran. Can you show me in your Quran where your prophet taught the same thing Moses did, that you can't have sex with a captive woman, especially one that's married. If you find a captive woman... You marry her and honor her and make her a wife. And if you divorce her, you can't sell her. She's not your property. Can you show me that in the Quran and the Sunnah? Okay, but who says that the laws of Moses have to be compatible with the laws of Muhammad? Humanity. Remember you said intellect, morality? The intellect cannot fathom that a holy God would allow his followers to take married women captive whose husbands are alive and then have sex with them because no sane woman who's married would voluntarily have sex with her captor. And yet she's not free because he owns her. Remember you appeal these, to intellect? Okay, these, but these are the rules of war. But why is it the you rules of the, war by Moses better than your prophet? Well, who said they're better or worse? The whole point of it is... Who said is it? If my um, wife is married and you attack me and you take her captive, I, the last thing I want you to do is to rape her or have sex with her. What are you talking about? So, answer me, what's the difference between a man who goes to war with his wife by his side and he loses the war and then the other side takes his wife one one person for example marries her after one month the other person for example in that situation he takes another woman and he rapes her the same day what's well, the so, difference well, i'm glad you I'm meant it's rape wife. but uh, let me answer you because if the israelites were attacking me then I would know that the Israelites, because of their God, could not have sex with a married woman. Because notice here it says that the woman will mourn her father and mother, meaning that she didn't have a husband that died. Because if she had a husband that died, it'd say, give her a month to mourn the death of her husband. Meaning this is a woman not married. So at least I would know that the God of the Hebrews would not allow them to take my wife, if I'm still alive, and rape her. Because that's a no-no. She's still my wife, although we may be taken under bondage, but they can't touch her because she's still mine, and they would honor that because the God of the Hebrews did not allow them to do what your God allowed Muhammad to do. That's number one. Number two, if we are fighting the Israelites and sinning against God, and I die, and I have a daughter, then <clears throat> the best thing that could happen to my daughter, instead of being treated as a sex slave and prostituted around and then sold off, 
that then she'd be taken in as a wife, given the status of a wife, and given the honor of a wife, and treated as a wife, who would then raise up children who'd be part of the community. I would hope it was the Israelites who attacked me, not the Muslims. I, I think the, what you should be hoping for is that you are a believer fighting on the right side, first of all. Okay. So, if, I mean, if you take up arms against the messenger of Allah, then the least thing you should worry about is what happens to your wife. So, but then why is it this messenger of Allah, that you believe Moses, had better rules than your messenger of Allah? I didn't say they were better. I'm telling Islam, you they are. And in, in Islam, you have to, when you take a, a woman as a, a captive, you have to wait at least one month before you have sex with her. Why? To make sure she's not pregnant. See, that means selfish. Is you're not doing it out of favor, mercy for her. You're doing it, say, hold on, maybe she's pregnant with this guy's kid. Let's be sure. In other words, it's selfish. It's for but the, the man's is, benefit, not the woman. The point of this, you said rape. I don't see anywhere in here where it says rape. Okay, let's go so with your you, logic. You added that. Okay, let's go with your logic. Question. So you're telling me, be honest with me now, fear Allah and be honest with me. If you were living at the time of Muhammad and they attacked your city, and your dad is alive and you're alive and they take your wife and your mother. You're telling me your mother and your wife would be okay saying, hey, it's okay, have sex with us. Who cares our husbands are alive? We are actually giddy that you're now gonna have sex with us. A sane woman would be okay and consent to it? That's, that's beside the point. You said rape. No, that is the point. Consent. Would they consent no, to it? It's not the point. Where is rape at? Oh, you said the, that answer the question, you see where it's rape. rape. Would they consent? Would they consent? Answer. How would I know what, what would happen in such a situation? My question is. Yes, you know, because you know your mother. She's a decent woman. She's moral. She's decent, your mother. She's moral. There's no way she would willfully allow a man to have sex with her with your dad still alive. What are you talking about, man? I didn't I didn't say anything other, other than that. Okay. My question is. Now, okay, hold on. Okay, you agree then. Then show me where the Quran and the Hadith says. That the captor has to now get her permission before he can have sex with her. Where does it say that? It doesn't say that anywhere. So do they have to get her permission or they can have sex with her nonetheless? If she becomes a sex slave, then that's her position from then on. So they don't have to get her permission. That's what we call rape. He can have sex with her. She has no say-so in the matter. He's now raping her. You can define it any way you want for all of us. We just saw you just admit it's rape. You can explain but, it away all you want. My, my that's between you and your God. Prophet never said rape women. That's my that's my point. You don't have to say it. That's what it is. You can deny the term, but that's the reality. So that's your business. Okay. So now my my question still remains. So Muhammad is in Mecca, preaching the uh, the okay. oneness of Allah. My friend, you're still trying to confirm and convince us after all this filth and immorality. Muhammad is a prophet. Are you serious? Filth and immorality. Yes, it uh, is. Where, where do you see filth okay. and immorality? Can I ask you a question? Okay, okay. let me show you. Shia, I'm going to show you. Shia, they do muta. Is that allowed? No. Why? Why, as, uh, why do Sunnis condemn muta, those Shia, your brothers, who follow the Quran and their own hadith, they do muta saying it's lawful. It's not lawful. Why? What is it? If if they do zinna, not zabsa, not zinna. If they do muta, what is that called? Fornication or adultery. So it's zinna, right? It's a sin. Of course. So when your prophet did it, then he was an adulterer. When did he do that? Your hadith say that your prophet allowed muta. Do I need to quote those hadith too? Yeah, he allowed it and then he disallowed it. So when he allowed it and he did muta, that wasn't adultery? Where did he do it? I mean, when you say okay, he allowed it, forget it. Than his companions. It. He allowed his companions. Forget he did it. His companions, who are supposed to be the best generation, the Sahaba, the best generation, they did muta. And for the people who don't know what muta is, muta is when you marry someone for a few days and divorce them and pay them for their services. So Umar did it, Abu Bakr did it, they all, the jihadis did it. Forget, Muhammad didn't do it, he was clean. All right.
so the companions of Muhammad, when they were doing muta with your God's approval and your messenger's approval, they were not committing adultery? No. Why? What changed? At, the, at that time, it was legal. Once it was ah, illegal, then when you do it, I it's see. a sin now. So now, well, listen. My, my question is that Okay, well, listen to what you said. Answer. Sleeping with a captive woman who's married, that's not adultery because your God said so. When your prophet allowed his companions to marry a woman for three days and tell, look, I'll marry you for three days and I'll divorce you and pay you for your services. That's not adultery. That's not prostitution. As long as Muhammad allows it, it can't be prostitution, adultery. But now when the Shia do it, it is adultery. It is prostitution. Interesting. Yeah, because now, now it's not allowed anymore. But so when he allowed it, it's not prostitution. It's not, it's not adultery. So let me ask you the hypothetical question again. And I'm asking because that's what your prophet did to a companion. One of his companions said, I want to have sex with the women. And he told them, would you want someone to have sex with your mother? No. Well, they don't want you to have sex with their mother. Would you want someone to have sex with your sister? No. That. So I'm doing to you what your prophet did to that man who was looking to have sex with women. And when your prophet then told him this, he, he felt embarrassed. So we're living at the time of your prophet again. We're living at the time of your prophet. You're there. You have an unmarried daughter and an unmarried sister. Abu Bakr and Umar come and say, Ya Akhi, my brother, we want to now marry your sister and daughter for three days. We'll divorce them, give them money. Are you okay with that? No, I mean, right say it again. Now, it depends, whatever the Messenger of Allah said. So whatever at that time, said, he allowed it, and you're living there. You're living at the time of Muhammad. You are there, and Abu Bakr and Omar come because your prophet allowed muta, this marriage. And they say, look, your daughter and your sister, we want to marry them for three days and we'll divorce them and pay them. You okay with that? <clears throat> that wasn't the circumstances that he allowed muta for. He allowed that in the case of war. When they're okay, at war. they're at war. They're and they're far, far, far away from the Okay, war, so. they're far away. You're in Pakistan, and they come to Pakistan. And they're fighting the idolaters in Pakistan, and you're a Muslim. And they go, Yahi, brother, we're far away from Mecca. We want to marry your daughter and your sister for three days and then divorce them and pay them. You okay with that? If that is what the Messenger of Allah uh, decreed, if that's, if that's what he decreed, that means that's what Allah decreed. So you're okay with it? So, I mean, in that hypothetical situation, I'm going to say, yes, I would. I it's would not agree. hypothetical. Because why? Because your prophet's companions did it to people's actual women at that time when he allowed yeah, it. Yeah, but you're asking me now if it happened now. Yeah. That's hypothetical. Because I want to see if you have any ghira, if you have any honor, and you would tell me, no, that's evil. But you are so dead in in your conscience because you blindly no, follow Allah. Sister, I understand what the meaning of obeying Allah and his messenger mean, and you don't. Obviously, you understand that. And the question I've been I've been trying to ask you, I hope you answered. Okay? okay, go ahead. What was the how did Jesus feel about Muhammad? Jesus said, if any prophet comes after him who contradicts his message, he's not of God. What do you mean? So how did, how did he feel about Muhammad? Well, That's Jesus is the one who damned Muhammad to hell because when Muhammad died, Jesus is the one who who killed him dead. Okay, so when Muhammad was alive in those twenty three years. Yes calling people to Tawheed, who was helping him so that Satan, people wouldn't his kill him. Oh, you see, you're saying Satan was? Yes, just like Joseph Smith. All those years okay. that Joseph Smith, well, hold on, well, let me finish. Joseph Smith, uh -huh. all those years he preached Mormonism, which is now the fastest growing religion in the West. Who was helping Joseph Smith? Your God, Allah? I didn't say that. No, I'm asking you. Joseph Smith comes after Muhammad. He says okay. that God commissioned him to be a prophet, and he's given the Book of Mormon. His religion is now the fastest growing religion in the West. So who helped Joseph Smith? Your God, Allah? Wait a minute. Who said that his religion is the fastest growing religion in the Statistics. West? Statistics. Google it, friend. Okay, hold on. What's the second largest religion in the world right now? You don't want to go there because... Um, let's ask wait, a wait. question. That list of 1.7 billion Muslims, it includes Shia, Alawi, Druze, okay. nation, of, what, let me fit, nation of Islam, Ahmadiyya, are they all Muslims? No, they're not. But how many so why are, are you including them in the second largest I religious group? Them. I didn't include them, but I'm saying... Yes, one, you did. 1.7 billion Muslims them. include the Shia. Okay. 
take them out. And, and how much do you have? Me, and tell me now, what is the second largest religion in the world? Hmm. Islam? Thank you. Now, okay. how many Mormons are there? Well, hold on. Islam has a 1400 year head start. Mormonism only started in the 1800s. You expect them to catch up to Islam that's been around for 1400 years? Joseph Smith, did he, where did he live? In America, 1800. Did he take over America? Did he become the ruler or the, the king or the president of America? Did your like prophet that? become a king? I thought he's a prophet, not a king. I didn't say he was a king. I said ruler. I said no, Joseph, Joseth, Smith Joseph Smith didn't have an army, ruler. didn't have an army like your prophet going around killing people and raping their women. But that's okay, and that makes it more amazing. Is, that is, makes it more amazing because his religion is spreading faster in less time without the sword, without armies like your prophet. Because without the armies, there'd be no Islam. And here's proof. When Muhammad died, what did Abu Bakr do? He sent an army to fight the apostates. But wait, did they do what? Wait, 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 wait. Music to my ears. What happened? Oh, well, he, he sent the Muslim army to fight the apostate tribes. What does apostate mean? They left Islam, right? Well, yeah. That's, in that's droves, cool. right? And I wouldn't say in droves, but I would say that... Uh, Hundreds, thousands of them left, right? Yeah, there were some... And they were forced to come back by the sword. Thank you very much. Okay, but... You're so can we stop this nonsense question. about Islam spreading because no, no, it's spread I'm, by the I'm sword? You, so you're, okay, so you're saying the devil helped Muhammad, right? Yes. That's, that's what you have to stick with. Just like you so would tell me, me, just like you would tell me, the devil helped Mirza Ghulam Ahmed, the devil helped Baha'u'llah and the Bab, and the devil helped <clears throat> Joseph Smith. Unless you okay, believe so Allah. Okay, so tell me the, the, only, the only religion where the creation is not being worshipped. You're lying. You worship the creation every day. How's that? Okay, when you pray five times a day, do you say "Assalamu alaikum, Ahiu Nabi"? When we are in our prayer, the yes, 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 yes. Translate what I said. When you are praying your five daily prayers in your tashahud, uh -huh. you yes. say "Assalamu alaikum, Ahiu Nabi." Translate, please. A peace be upon you, O Messenger. O Prophet, Nabi's Prophet. Oh, prophet, yes. And so you're in America, let's say, and your prophet is in the grave in Medina. And in your prayer, you're mentioning him and speaking to him directly. Okay, so you, you're going to try to interpolate that to, meaning, to mean that we worship Muhammad. Is that what you're trying to well, do? Well, what is prayer if not worship? But we don't acknowledge that we worship Muhammad. Is it, but are correct? you praying when you say to Muhammad, peace be upon you, O prophet? It's exactly what it says. Peace be upon you, O prophet. And that that's in your prayer, prayer, right? That's part of your prayer? That's words of your prayer? Yes, yes. And your prayer is ibadah worship? Yes. So you just admit that part of your prayer, you directed to Muhammad, so part of your worship is directed to Muhammad. No. Yes. Prayer is worship. And in prayer, you talk to Allah and you talk to Muhammad. You don't talk to anyone else. You don't say, assalamu alayka al-fadi. Assalamu alaikum, Sam Shamu. But the, the point I'm trying to make is you're, you're saying the devil helped Muhammad to establish a religion where. Just only like he helped Joseph worship. Smith and Baha'u'llah, yep. Well, let me finish though. Yeah, go ahead. Because in Islam, the only the difference is in Islam, only one God is being worshipped. The creation is not being worshipped. I just that's, told you the creation is worshipped. Why do you keep. That's, well, that's your opinion. But, but you admit you pray to a dead that. man. Is Muhammad dead? I don't admit to worshiping the creation. But is he dead? Oh. Is Muhammad dead? Okay. Yes, he's dead. And so you just admit to everyone, everyone's hearing you, you speak to a dead man in your prayer, and prayer is worship. I send peace and blessings on him in the prayer. No, you don't. But you speak I, to him directly. I, I, do not, I do not admit to worshiping Muhammad. But do you, you speak to him to, directly, on, right? Let me ask you a question. Do you admit to worshiping Jesus? Of course, he's God in the flesh. Of course, I'm a okay. worshiper. So you just admitted to worshiping the creation. I did not admit which to part, worshiping Which part which part is not clear that I said he's God in the flesh, he's not creation. Stop imposing your understanding about Jesus okay, on me. That's your rationale. So Even that's the Jesus. Hindus have, the Hindus have rationale. No, that's what Jesus elephant. told me in my Bible. Oh no, that's your rationale. But the Hindus have rationale of worshiping an elephant. And the Hindus My have friend, Jesus is not an elephant. 
Jesus, you believe. I didn't say he was. Okay, but you believe he's the messenger. The messenger Jesus, you're talking over me. We're not going to get anywhere. The messenger Jesus, he's the one who told me to pray to him and worship him. According to you. No, according to the angel of Jesus, which he inspired his followers to record for me. Uh, no, that's according to your interpretation of the Bible. Okay, Zachary let's go. Let's see if it's my interpretation. Go to John 5, 22 to 23. He John 5, 22 to 23. Hold on, hold on. Let me finish. Okay. Zachary Knock has the whole Bible memorized. No, he doesn't. He's a joke. He misquotes it. And he does not understand the Bible like you understand it. So it's all about the understanding. Now, Friend, the can we forget Zachary Knock and go to see what Jesus says? John 5, 22 okay. to 23. But my point is, everyone who worships the creation has rationale as to why they do it. Yes, that's why you just had rationale why you deny that you are worshiping a dead man, even though you are. Same because rationale. Because I will admit to that. Yes, the you don't need to admit it. You're doing it. You, denial is, doesn't mean you're, example, it's, it's not real. When you admit to everyone, everyone heard you, let me repeat. In my five daily acts of prayer, which is ibadah, worship, I speak to a dead man far away, and I say to the dead man in my prayer, peace be upon you, O prophet, and the mercy of Allah <clears throat> be upon you. So you just admit, I'm talking to a dead man in my prayer, which is worship. Prayer is worship. So you can deny the reality. You are a pagan, a worshiper of a creature. So what's the difference between what I'm doing and what you're doing then? Because you, you I admit. don't believe Jesus is creation. He's How many times do I need to say it? Jesus is God who became flesh. You don't believe Muhammad is God, so you are a pagan, a idolater, a creature worship, a Muhammad. Okay. Does God have a mother? Why would he need a mother? I'm at, I didn't say he did. I'm asking, does God have a mother? No. But Jesus' mother is Mary. That's because he's human, right? So now, okay, you just admitted he's the creation. You say it's human. No. Human is creation, okay. right? You know your Quran has a mother? Hold on, no, no, don't change. No, 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 no. I'm going to bury you in your own Jesus, argument. No, on, I'm going to bury. Hold just, on. Let me answer you. On, don't tell on, me how to answer you. Does your Quran Jesus, have a mother? You, hold on. No, you does your Quran Jesus have a mother? Not, hold on, hold on. Here we go again. You oh. said Jesus is not the creation, right? Yes. And then you just admit that he's a human being. Sure. Are you saying that human being is not the creation? Which part of God became flesh wasn't clear? God or flesh? Let me dumb it down to go to your level. Which part of God became flesh wasn't clear? The God part or the flesh part? I understand okay. what you're saying. So what I'm the saying is human nature of Jesus is what he created from the womb of Mary. But the person of Jesus is eternal. He's the one who created Mary and created the human nature from Mary so that Mary would become his mother. But now let me turn it against you. Does your crown have a mother? No. Yes, it does. So you don't know your crown. Chapter 43, verses 3 and 4 of your crown. Your crown has a mommy. Read for him chapter 43, verses 3 and 4 of the Quran. Your Quran has a mommy, friend. 43. Verses 3 and 4. Right. Verse uh, 3 and 4, Arabic first. Inna ja'alnahu Qur'anan arabiyan la'allakum ta'qilun wa innahu fi ummi al-kitabi ladayna la'aliyun hakim. We made it an Arabic Quran so that you may understand and it is with us in the source book or in the mother uh, book. Okay, now what's the Arabic word for the source book? Um, um al -kitab. So this Quran is in the mother of the book. So who's the daddy? Yeah, I mean, Christian Prince used that same argument. Okay, it refute it. And it's, it's ridiculous. Okay, then like show us why it's ridiculous. Like, like I said before, what is your qualification in Arabic? Hey, friend, if that's all you're going to say, maybe we should take a break and you can come back tomorrow. We can talk more. No, no, no. Let, let's keep let's keep going. I mean, we're, okay, we're so okay. You, I don't mind going if I, was, I doesn't mind. Okay, what does Um al-Kitab mean? You're the Arabic expert. Forget me. I'm stupid. What's uh, What does Um al-Kitab mean? I didn't say I'm an Arabic expert. Okay, um what does Um al-Kitab al mean? The mother book. What does Um al-Kitab mean? Um al-Kitab. Where are we at? Which chapter? Which chapter verse? 43, verses 3 and 4. As you look it up, let me just go get me some water. Hold on, I'm listening. 43, 3 and 4. Al, are you tired or are you okay? Oh, I mean, uh, everybody's having fun. Uh, let's yes, just go. Okay, hold on. Let me just get to 
Read it in Arabic. Tell me what Umm al-Kitab means. Let me just get something. I'm, I'm still here. I'm listening. Okay, so we made it an Arabic Quran so that you may understand. And it is with us in the source book, Sublime and Wise. What's the word source book in Arabic? I'm sorry? What's the Arabic words for source book? Ummul Kitab, the mother of the what book. What does Ummi? But like I said before, it's how you understand the verse. The Muslim scholars who, who explain this verse, you won't find any of them saying that the Quran has a mother. If you want to understand it that way, you're free to do that. But so, that, doesn't mean, that doesn't mean that, that that's the explanation of it. Okay? okay. So the scholars are going to explain it away. That's fine. We agree. But can you admit that the word um means mother? Yes. Okay, so Um al-Kitab, if I translate it literally, is mother of the book. However you want to explain it, it's mother of the book, right? Yes. Okay, so you can go to the scholars and explain it all the way away all you want. I just want to know, if I'm reading Arabic and I see the word Um al-Kitab without the scholars, and I just read it because it's supposed to be plain Arabic for those who know Arabic and understand. It doesn't say go to the scholars to help you explain what is plain Arabic because the plain Arabic causes problems, so we need to explain it away. Um al-Kitab, mother of the book. It says fee. It's in the mother of the book. So if the Quran is in the mother of the book, that means the Quran has a mother. Now explain that to me. How can it have a mother? What does it mean that it has a mother? Uh, we're really getting into some intricate, uh, yeah, go again. intricate details of Islam here, but it means that the Quran is in what's called al al-Mahfud, the preserved tablet. And was that created, that tablet? You know what? I don't know. Okay. Go back and study and come back. That's why I'm saying if you want to call it a night. But no, no, I don't want to call it a night. I want to get to I want to get to what are you getting? If you're saying the devil helped Muhammad to establish a that? religion where yes. idols were not worshipped. Who We're said idols are not worshipped? You worship the black stone and you bow towards the Kaaba. Those are the two biggest idols of Islam. Those aren't idols. Yes, they if you are. want to understand that way, you're free, but okay. we don't admit right, so that then that means, idols. Okay, listen okay. to yourself. Isa, listen to yourself. You're telling me, if you want to understand it that way, you're free, free to understand it. We don't. That means your arguments are weak because I don't concede or accept your assumption. The black stone that you smooch, that's an idol. Bowing to the Kaaba, that's an idol. So you did not erase that's, idolatry. No, you replaced it. That's your opinion. The okay, just like your opinion. Is a stone that we believe descended from the heavens, and it was placed in that corner of the Kaaba, and we don't worship it. We don't even have to even kiss it if we don't want to. So it's, it's not, not necessary to kiss it, right? It's not a pillar of Islam. It is not. But it's not necessary. Islam. Someone can be Muslim and live their whole life and never even look at the black stone. You know why? Muslim. Because if they can't afford to do Hajj, of course. But what if you can no, afford? Even if you, even if you go there, if okay. you're there. Oh, no, if you you're there, to... if you're there, and you can't touch it or kiss it because of the crowd, it says you can either touch it with a stick or reach out your hand and symbolically touch it. Or you don't have to do any of that. No, it's Sunnah. You have to. We, we told you you didn't have it's to. As soon as you, as soon as it's best to do that, but you don't have to. The worship is still okay. accepted. Let's go Listen. with it. So you, you let them, I'm glad you're saying that. So there's something you don't have to do. It's not necessary. So then why did your prophet kiss and smother it if it's not necessary? Because it's the sunnah. It's best to. Okay. By doing that, but you don't have to do it, right? So why even do it at all? If you don't have to do it, it's not necessary. Why do it at all? I just told you. The why did your prophet do it? Removed. You get more reward. But why it. did your prophet do it if it's not necessary to do it? That's what I'm asking. Why did he do you. it? I just told this is the, this is what Abraham did. This is what he was doing. Show me, show quote me some the, sources the that Abraham did it. Abraham was. Show me some sources that Abraham kissed the black stone. I, and, uh, I already told you I can't show you that. Okay, okay you so. can believe it, or if you want, you can disbelieve okay, it. Okay, well, I disbelieve it. So we're telling you, I'm giving you reasons why Muhammad can't be a true prophet. Do you have another question? 
I'll take one yeah, more question. I didn't finish the, the first one. Yet. Stop so with the Satan. Saying, Satan did not eradicate idolatry. Islam is idolatry from the pit of hell. Do you understand? I don't agree with you. Okay, so you're saying that Satan helped someone to establish a religion. Yes. Where the prophet. No more. No. No. No alcohol is being drunk anymore. Why was alcohol no, forbidden? No, 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 let me finish. Okay. No, no gambling, no fornication, no adultery. These are all things that are allowed in Christianity. So you're saying, well, hold on, hold on. Say, you just proved Joseph Smith is a prophet and you should reject mommy because Joseph no, Smith. I no, I didn't. No, saying, no caffeine. Saying, well, hold on. No caffeine. No idolatry. No fornication. No adultery. Clean living. So you just convinced me to follow Joseph Smith you, according to your logic. No, I didn't. Yes, you did. No, I didn't. Wait, Joseph, Joseph Smith, Smith says no caffeine. He's even creation. better than you. No caffeine. Joseph Smith, Joseph Smith called to worship an, a man. In Islam, and no, Muhammad no called to lick worship. a black stone. That's not worship. We you can say it all you want. Not worship. And Muhammad called you to bow to a cube. But listen, we don't admit to that. But let, yet okay, what's your next question? Admit, because we're you know, in circles now. What's the next question? Okay. Because we're going in circles. I'm, I'm, trying finish, I'm trying to finish the question. It's, it won't take much time. Believe me. Go ahead, yeah. So you're saying that Satan helped Muhammad to establish this religion. This is the same which, question four times already. Okay. Uh, can you let me finish yet? No. Where, because your assumptions are wrong. Even alcohol. Why did your prophet cancel out alcohol? Allah forbids alcohol because Why? it distracts people from the worship of Allah. That's not what the Hadith say. But yet it's still in Christianity. That's not what the Hadith say. You're lying to me. Do you know the I'm verses about answer. alcohol? I'm not, I'm not, there's, there's not just one reason. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm going to give you the reason. Is, I'm going to give you the verses and the reason if you're listening. So that, let me give you the verses because you don't know what you're talking about. Surat al-Baqarah, chapter 2, verse 219. Surat al-Nisa, chapter 4, verse 43. Surat al maida 59091. If you know your own history, Muhammad allowed them to drink, but they could not be drunk for prayers. So why did your prophet allow for a period of time people to drink, even get drunk, as long as they were not drunk for prayers? That's what he initially allowed. Okay, because in the beginning of Islam, the people were heavily addicted to alcohol. So it would have been unwise to, to say... And one day, look, alcohol is forbidden. Good. So it was done in stages. So you so admit, it, though, we he allowed it for a while. What's that? You admit he did allow it for a while then. Allah allowed it, not Okay, Muhammad. fine. But then why did he prohibit it? Isn't it true that it's because <clears throat> they got, your, the companions of Muhammad got into a drunken stupor and hit each other, and that's when he prohibited it? Uh, so Muhammad didn't pro prohibit anything. It Allah was, uh, prohibited it when the Muslims came to blow because they got into a drunken stupor, started insulting, came to blows because they were drunk, didn't know what they were doing. Allah forbid, right? Only then? Yeah, like I said, it was revealed. Okay, but don't, as, you said it too fast. Occurred. Am I right? Yes. yes. Good. But now you just destroyed your religion because according to chapter 5, verses 90, 91, Intoxicants is a work of the devil. Why did your God allow his followers to engage in a work of the devil for a period of time? Why did he allow them to consume a work of the devil? Well, I just told you why. Oh, so you're okay with Allah allowing them to drink the creation of the devil for a period of time? I just told you why. To wean them off because it was heavily addicted. So My you're okay with that, though? Can Christians drink alcohol? Okay, but you're okay with that, right? You're okay that... Chapter 5, verse 90, 91, stones that are venerated and intoxicants and divining arrows are the work of Satan. They're an abomination. So that for a while, your God allowed Muslims to sip a work of Satan and to get drunk off a work of Satan because they were addicted to it instead of giving them the power to overcome it overnight. Yes. Good. Now, are you okay with the work of Satan being in paradise? Because what is Allah going to give the Muslims? Rivers of wine, right? Yes. So you're okay now. I want everyone to hear this. You're okay that intoxicants, of which wine is one, khamar is part of uh, intoxicants, will now be flowing in Allah's Jannah, even though it's the creation of Satan. You're okay with that? 
Well, who say it's the same as the wine that we have here on earth? Show me where it says the wine is not the same and that it doesn't intoxicate. Because I know what verse you're going to quote and doesn't say the wine doesn't intoxicate you. Okay, who says that it's the same? That's my question. You see, you're you assuming. Where do you find in the Quran that it's not the same? It says khamar. And when it says khamar, unless that context suggests otherwise, my assumption is it's telling me something that I should be familiar with because it's using a word that made sense to the people who heard it. Khamar. What's khamar? Bubblegum? I mean, khamar is well known what the, what the meaning of the word is. Thank you. So but, it says you're going to have rivers I'm, of it I'm in paradise. You this, just because two things share the same name, one on earth or one in paradise, it does not necessarily mean they're the yes, same. Yes, they are exactly. the same. Do you know why? No, I'll tell you why they're the same. Because your prophet said, he who drinks khamar here will not drink it there. So if you deny yourself here, you'll drink it there. That means it has to be the same because that's the incentive why you shouldn't drink it here because you're going to have plenty of it there. Right. but if it Right. Someone, Good. You said if right. It, if, if the khamar, if the wine intoxicates someone here on earth, that does not mean it's going to have the same effect on someone in paradise. Okay. Once again. Let me run with you. To, let me go with you. To find details. Okay. Let me go with you. Okay. Run. So I'm going to drink wine here, but not get drunk. Can I do that? No. Why not? Because it's prohibited. But hold on. You're saying the prohibition is because it gets you drunk. Well, I can drink wine and not get drunk. So why can't I drink it? Because I'm going to drink it in paradise and not get drunk. And the yeah, more importantly, my more important question was this. Apples and oranges. My more important it's... question, which you didn't answer, was this. This was the most important question, which you didn't answer. Since intoxicants, which includes wine, is a creation of the devil, why is Allah including the work of the devil in paradise? You didn't answer that question. Yeah, I, I, I thought I did answer the question. Actually. No, you didn't, because the khamar I... there is the khamar here that you deny yourself so you can have it there. It's the same. But you're, you're comparing apples and oranges. But, but let, let's get away from the details. I won't get to the main principles. No, that was the details because you used that silly argument to prove that Islam is not of the devil because it prohibits intoxicants, but you forgot okay. to tell us why. Okay. So does, does God die? Just answer that question. It depends on what you mean by death. What's death? A death is known. It's well known. Does God die? No, I don't know what you know. What does death mean? Meaning, does his soul depart and he falls down as an inanimate body? So you just define death contrary to the Bible and the Quran. Can you show me where the Quran says that death means you become inanimate? <coughs> it doesn't say anywhere in the Quran. It's a, the, you asked me my definition, yes. I gave it to you. Well, let me give you the chronic definition to correct yourself. Chapter 2, verse 154 of the Quran. Read it for me. Chapter what? 2, verse 154. And do not say of those who are killed in the cause of in the cause of God dead. Rather, they are alive, but you do not perceive. So when a martyr is killed, is he dead or alive? He's dead. Oh, so you just said the Quran is a lie. He says, do not say he's dead. You just went against your God. No, I didn't. Read it again. He just told you don't say you're dead, but you went and against Allah said they are dead. those who are killed in the cause of God dead. Rather, they are alive, but you do not perceive. So why did you just say they're dead when your Quran says don't say they're dead? Because in a sense they're dead. but in, in the Are you sense, disagreeing with your Quran? Look, you're not Allah, you're not Muhammad. Your Quran says you Muslim do not say they're dead. So why do you keep saying they're dead? You don't understand what this verse means. It means Okay, go to 3169 once. <laughs> <laughs> three, one, six, nine, one, seven. Let me explain what it means. It means don't consider someone who died as a martyr as dead because in actuality they are alive. Okay, so in, they're alive. They're, they're not dead. They are alive in a sense, but they are physically what dead. What does the Quran say in a sense? That's why I said you need to understand the meaning. Thank you. I'm glad Allah sent you to explain to me the Quran because it seems Muhammad didn't do a good enough job according to you. Go to I'm three. Sorry, you're not impressed by it, but go to three. One sixty nine to one seventy. Three. One sixty nine to one seventy. Three. One sixty nine. To one seventy.
It's the same. Do not consider those killed in the car.
Okay, everyone, I'm so sorry about what happened. Um, it's one of those things, you know, spiritual warfare are serious, are real. So anyway, uh, I told Sam uh, that I'm going to wrap it up. Uh, it's been too late anyway, and it's unfortunate for our friend that uh, he came in swinging, yet everyone noticed for two hours he wasn't able to present anything. So I hope uh, we can bring him back again and we continue this dialogue. So again, thank you so much, uh, everyone. And uh, we apologize uh, for uh, this. Uh, it's really quite unusual for the internet to act up at this time uh, because this is the best time actually to do the live streams, uh, very low uh, load on the internet in general, but it seemed like maybe they're doing something in the area. So we apologize again. We love you all. Uh, join me tomorrow, by the way, uh, tomorrow at two o'clock uh, New York times. I'm gonna have, uh, I'm sorry, actually uh, one o'clock New York times one o'clock New York Times, I am going to have Rob Christian, and we are going to talk about uh, refuting this idea that the satanic versus story and event is fabrication. We are going to prove that it is real, and we are going to refute uh, some of the modern arguments against it, which is based on embarrassment. So I hope to see you again tomorrow. Thank you to our amazing moderators. Some of you are staying up late. Some of you are waking up early. We apologize for all of this. Uh, we love you all. Uh, thank you so much. Pray for that, uh, you know, uh, our friend Isa. May the Lord just open his hearts and his eyes uh, to know the truth. I hope to see you again tomorrow at uh, one o'clock New York Times with Rob Christian. And the topic will be satanic verses, the satanic verses. God bless. This is Al-Fadi over and out. Take care.